that has been brought to us by Officer uh, Jamie Lajoran. Uh, the board is here, and we have retained the services of Attorney Gormley to help manage these proceedings. I'm going to turn it over to him to explain how we're going to proceed. Thank you, Sam. Uh, as mentioned, we are here to um, hear the grievance of Officer Jamie LaJoy, who is represented by Michael Zano as it relates to a one-day suspension issued on January 12, 1917, relating to a missed detail. Uh, I do have to correct Suzanne to some extent. I haven't been retained by the board. I've been retained by the town. I'm here on behalf of the police department, and I'm not representing the board, which is the ultimate arbiter of, uh, of this grievance. Uh, I am associated with a firm in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Hopeful Phoenix, Gormley and Roberts, and do a fair amount of employment law. To that end, let me explain the process as I envision it. Officer Joy and or his attorney, Mr. Zaino, will have an opportunity to make a statement for the record. I will then question Officer Joy. I will then have the opportunity to elicit testimony from members of the police department. To the extent that Mr. Zaino has questions of them, he will be free to ask them those questions. At that point, the grievance hearing will close. Given the nature of the proceeding, we will not be able to entertain questions from those not on the board. The board will be able to make inquiry, uh, as it seems to, during the process of the hearing. Uh, at the end of that, the hearing will close and the board will have uh, the time prescribed in its personnel manual to render a decision, which I believe is three weeks. With that, uh, are there any questions, Mr. Zane? So, you are free to proceed. I submitted a grievance uh, to the selectmen. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be heard. Um, we both greatly appreciate that, especially during a public session. I know that's a little unusual, um, and we appreciate that opportunity. Um, I laid out in the grievance kind of the gist and the general parameters uh, through which we are filing this grievance. Um, it is legitimate based on the policies that exist in the town, based on the procedures that have taken place so far. And I just want to highlight a few things and then I'll allow the procedures to take place as were outlined um, by the police department's attorney. Um, in particular, um, I'd like to highlight one key piece from our perspective. In terms of the letter of suspension, it wasn't in particular for a missed detail um, to correct what was mentioned earlier but in fact was issued for not showing up at a scheduled training. Um, it's our position that that training was actually canceled. So if anything, Officer LaJoy would have been late, but it is not a fact that he missed a training that took place. On that very day that it was scheduled, he texted uh, the lieutenant. There was a text communication between them. I have that documented uh, where the lieutenant's asking if he's going to show up and he says don't bother because it's been canceled. Uh, so while we concede that he would have been late for that training, nevertheless he did in fact not miss it because it did not happen. Um, in addition to that, there are other matters that have been handled by the department in manner that seem to be different than they've been handled similarly with Officer LaJoy. And we laid out several of those talking about uh, certain uh, PT testing, shift swaps, towing policy enforcement, uh, firearms instructor policy, whether uh, officers can have and maintain a secondary job with part-time employment, and um, how the department has handled other officers who have missed training opportunities or details. And I laid out that in the grievance that was filed. And we think that paints a picture of disparate treatment where Officer LaJoy is actually being treated differently than other officers. And when you <clears throat> consider the disagreements that Officer LaJoy has had with the lieutenant, uh, that he has voiced those disagreements with the chief, and as a result of that, it, it paints a picture of concern from our perspective that they, that may in fact lead to the treatment that Officer LaJoy gets and not in fact his actual alleged violations of the policies. 
In terms of the shift swaps, um, we have documentary evidence that that is actually still going on despite the policy in place that it is not allowed. Um, it's allowed for the lieutenant, it's allowed for other officers who can take advantage of that when they need it, but not for Officer LaJoy. In fact, in January, Officer LaJoy sent an email requesting that that um, policy be reconsidered, and that request was ignored. Uh, there was no response to that. And since then, there have, in fact, been shift swaps that have been documented on site. In terms of the firearms instructor, that's a great one for pointing out how Officer LaJoy was held to a different standard than another officer. He was told he had to wait three years uh, with the department before he would be eligible uh, to go for that position. Uh, he did so and then ultimately attained the position of firearms instructor. Now subsequently Officer Will Hancock was allowed to be a firearms instructor in just a year and a half of being with the department. And at that time it wasn't a, a, a need-based position because they already had two firearms instructors at the department. So at that point there's a situation where another officer was allowed to do something that Officer LaJoy was not. In terms of overtime, this is something I also mentioned in the memorandum. Um, there is a department policy of seniority, and they go through that for the opportunity to do details. One of the things we're talking about here tonight, and the department has skipped him in that seniority and offered it to other officers in the department who have actually taken advantage of that. Um, as I'm sure this board is well aware, um, that is a significant source of income for officers. Um, having that seniority structure in place ensures that those who have the seniority of the town can actually take advantage of those positions first. Um, it was after the filing of this grievance um, that Officer LaJoy was passed over and was not given the opportunity to take advantage of those shifts. Um, fortunately, that has since stopped and he has been offered those positions since then. Our concerns are that he is being treated differently, and we've just tried to highlight a few of those. I won't repeat everything that's in the memorandum as it's been submitted, and I understand it will be incorporated into the minutes of this meeting. Um, I understand that um, the attorney has some questions for Officer LaJoy, and then he'll be calling some other witnesses, and I'll have the opportunity uh, to ask them questions as well. That is all we'd like to make for an introductory statement. Uh, Officer LaJoy, do you have anything to say before being questioned? I do not. <coughs> I'm going to review uh, in some detail the allegations presented in your grievance. You have read that grievance, and you're familiar with the contents of it, correct? Yes. It is true? Yes. Okay. And if requested, you would, you would swear to the truth of the allegations in that, yes. correct? Okay. Let me start with uh, the first point noted in in the grievance, and that is the towing policy. If we jump to the bottom line, there is nothing in your personnel manual about violate or personnel file about the violation of the towing policy, is there? As of as of today, or when when is the last time? Upon the last review or Officer Joy, is there any mention in your personnel policy that you violated the towing policy in, in your personnel file that you violated the towing policy? There's no, there's nothing in that file at this okay. time. So you agree with me that you claim that you were treated desperately, but there is no record of any reprimand of you for violation of the towing policy, correct? It's been taken out, yes sir. Okay. You do mention, you do take issue that another officer was not written up for violation of the towing policy, correct? Correct. You name him by name, Will Hancock. Yes, sir. You state that you're, you're aware that Officer Hancock violated the policy, correct? Yes. Did you, as required by departmental policy, report that to anyone? Uh, I did not report that to anyone. Why not? I just didn't think that was my, um, my job my job to do. Okay, but you thought it was appropriate to put in a public uh, grievance that you felt Officer Hancock had somehow been given preferential treatment? Yes. Is there any uh, distinction in the years of service between you and Officer Hancock? Yes. What is that distinction? Uh, I have almost five and a half years on the job, well, in Rollinsford, almost ten 
10 years on the job, my whole career. Um, obviously, Hancock, uh, he's going on a year and a half. Does it strike you as unfair that a relative rookie officer would be given some latitude that an officer of some 10 years experience would not be given? Uh, at that time in 2012, I was brand new to this department. With five years of experience, correct? Right? Yeah, plus or minus a couple of yeah, yes. Okay. So, would you agree with me that your situation is distinct from Officer Hancock's? I don't believe so, because I was here within the department for approximately the same amount of time, so getting to know policies and procedures is the same amount of time Officer Can Hancock's receives. Yeah, but ultimately the result is the difference, is, is the same, isn't it? Because neither you nor Officer Hancock have been written up for violating the towing policy, have you? I was, yes. There's nothing in your personnel policy, it's that been, personnel manual, isn't it? has been taken out. There, there was, though. Okay. Today, if someone looked at your personnel file, there is no suggestion that you violated the towing policy, is there? It's supposed to be taken out, so hopefully not. So you will agree with me that there's been no distinction in treatment of you as, as it relates to Officer Hancock, correct? You both have personnel folders without assertions of violation of the tolling policy. Right? I don't, I don't know, I'm not familiar with what's in his personnel file. Well, you wrote that you spoke to him about his not being written up, and he said he didn't know what a write-up was, right? That's what he told you, sir. So would that indicate to you that he hasn't been written up for violating the tolling policy? Probably a good indication, yes. Okay. Let's go next to the uh, swap shifts, sw shift swaps. <clears throat> Would you agree with me that it's within the purview of the chief of the department to determine what shifts the force works? It's his department, so ultimately it's his say. And the police department isn't a democracy, is it? You don't all vote on what you're going to do. The chief makes a decision, and that's what you do, correct? Yes, I believe it has to come to the board, but yes, ultimately it's the chief's okay. decision. Well, you, you, don't, you don't get to vote, do you? No. The chief doesn't say, guys, I'm thinking about doing this. Is it okay with you, does he? Mm. No, it's ultimately it's up to him. <clears throat> so... In addition to the chief, there's a lieutenant. Yes, lieutenant Uraskovich, correct? Yes, sir. He is a supervising officer, correct? Yes, sir. He is not part of the regular shift rotation, is he? He works a regular shift, yes, sir. Well, he is not part of the regular shift rotation. He, he was. You're sure of that? Yes. Uh, in he your experience, did Lieutenant Uraskovich typically work a regular shift. He recently does now, yes. But it's your testimony that, well, I guess we'll hear from the chief and the lieutenant about this, that Lieutenant Uraskovich was just another one of the guys that worked a shift along with everyone else? When I first started, we were all rotated together. And when was that? Uh, 2012, um, for at least a couple of years. Okay. So since 2014, that hasn't been the case, correct? I don't know the exact year, sir. 2015, that hasn't been the case. I don't know the exact year. Well, what, was it in the last year? He's been on his regular schedule within the last year, yes. Maybe the last two years? Yes. Okay. So you agree with me that at least in the last two years, Sergeant that, Lieutenant Uraskovich has not been part of the regular shift rotation, won't you? That's what you just said, isn't it? Well, he, the thing, he works other shifts. Like, he'll, he'll swap with other part-time officers and work different shifts if they work his shift. So Let's, let's leave the part-time officers out here for a second. Let's talk about the full-time force. <laughs> Sergeant, or Lieutenant Uraskovich isn't swapping shifts with full-time officers, is he? Uh, most recently, he swapped with uh, Officer Hancock for four hours to go on, on vacation early. We're going to get to that in a minute. Other than that, do you have any examples where Sergeant Lieutenant Uraskovich was just part of the regular shift rotation? Not in front of me, no. Okay. So you will agree with me that the lieutenant 
is separate and apart from the full-time uniformed force as it relates to shift work, won't you? You just did, correct? What's, what's shift work in your definition, sir? Because I mean, he works for a certain number of hours on a rotating basis as assigned by the lieutenant. Okay. He works day shift, rotation, shift work. All the time, right? Correct. Yes. And you don't work the day shift, do you? No, I'm not allowed to, sir. Okay. So there came a time when uh, the chief said that he was changing the way the shift rotation worked, correct? <clears throat> Yes. You took fairly strong issue with that, didn't you? I did. In fact, you chastised the lieutenant for not carrying his weight with his shift, didn't you? Can you read? Can you? Well, let me read this out and see if this sounds familiar. I'm reading, um, uh, actually, is this an extra copy? Do you yep. Have and actually, well, would you just mark that number one so that we've got a record? We have a chance to read that? <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, sir. Let me read it. Uh, <coughs> Lieutenant, the midnight does not get two full, full days off as well. Get out Thursday mornings so you have Friday off and you're back in for Saturday at midnight to work Sunday? Question mark. This is a five-man department, not three-man department. We all should be working together as a, quote, team, close quote, to make this work. Lieutenant, if you're allowed to keep the same schedule, we should be allowed to keep the same schedule. Like our old sergeant always says, what's fair is fair. Did you write that? Yes, I did, sir. And that's your superior officer, correct? Uh, it's my lieutenant, yes. Okay. And so you're telling him that because the chief told us we have a different schedule, you, lieutenant, better get on it. Isn't that what you said? That's not in that tone, sir. Did I read this correctly? Uh, yes, you did. Okay. But that's not the tone I used, sir. But the words I read were the words that you wrote. Absolutely. Okay. You also just mentioned that uh, the lieutenant engaged in a shift swap. But let me quote from your <coughs> grievance. Since the change in policy on shifts, the lieutenant has been able to swap shifts as well as two part-time officers, Ben Philbrook and James Late. <coughs> Are Ben Philbrook and James Layton full-time officers? Part-time, sir. Do they get the same pay benefits that you get? Probably not, but I don't know what they get for pay or benefits. Would it shock you to know that the part-time officers get nothing other than an hourly wage? No retirement, no health care, no vacation day, no nothing? Yes, sir. Okay. So you'll agree with me that they're essentially performing a service for the town showing up just for an hourly wage to fill in where the town otherwise wouldn't have police coverage, correct? Yes. And you feel that you should be treated the same as them, is that correct? The police officers under the town of Rollinsburg, New Hampshire, and I believe everyone should be treated the same way. Okay. Even a guy that's getting paid a full salary with vacation, uh, pension, health care, he gets, he should get off and have the same the, the same uh, limitations as a part-time officer. I believe everyone should reach. Well, let me put it a different way. Let me just allow him to finish his answer. I would appreciate that, okay? Mm -hmm. I feel that everyone in this department, the Rollinsburg Police Department, took the same oath I did and should be treated the same way. Despite the, same, they don't, despite the fact they don't get the same benefits? Absolutely. Okay. Do the part-time officers have other jobs, to your knowledge? I believe they do, sir. Okay, so they're, they're doing this on a fill-in basis? Yes, sir. But I'm correct, aren't I, officer, that that's really the basis of a lot of your criticisms, that these part-time guys who have full-time jobs and get no benefits 
aren't treated the same as you, right? Can you rephrase that, please? Well, I can repeat it. Of the basis of many of your uh, assertions of unequal treatment are that you, as a full-time officer, paid a salary with health benefits, pension, vacation days, and the rest, are treated differently than guys who have a full-time job, come in as needed, and receive just the salary. Yes. That's the basis of... of yes. Okay. That that's somehow unfair, right? Yes. Okay. And then you also wrote that the, uh, the lieutenant... Uh, well, we'll get to that later. That was another... <clears throat> and just to be clear, I wrote it. And he said that he read it and would swear to the truth. He just said he wrote it. I'm just clarifying the record. I wrote it. Okay. Let me let me clarify, officer. You've read this carefully, haven't you? Yes, sir. And as you said before, if required to do, you would swear to the truth. Yes, correct? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> You said that your request that the chief reconsider his policy prohibiting shift swaps has been ignored. Is, are you of the opinion that because you make a request to the chief that he has a duty to respond to you and explain his decision to you? May I object to the board as that's just not relevant to the grievance that's here. He just expressed his opinion to that, noting that this is a policy that's being treated differently in his opinion. What his opinion in those, whether the chief should respond or not, is not relevant to the grievance that's before the board. You can answer. Can you re-ask the question? Do you feel that the chief has, has an obligation to explain his policies to you or to reconsider them because you don't like them. <clears throat> Ultimately it comes back, he is he is the chief of police of the Rollinsburg Police Department. He is in charge of the police department and a response would be a pro in a professional matter um, in, in a question of shift swapping. I think that would be highly appropriate for him to respond saying yes or no. Do you think he has an obligation to do that? Yes. Based on what? Based on he's the leader of this department and his job description is to keep us informed of uh, department needs and structure. He's he in charge you, of the structure. He told you what the shifts were, didn't he? That was not the shifts, sir. That was in reference to shift swapping. Well, he told you what the, what the policy was on shift swaps, didn't he? They said that they would, he said there would be no more shift swaps. Yes, I agree to that. But you felt that because he didn't explain it to you that that's, that was worthy of... <clears throat> Sir, I felt, I felt the need to ask, send an email requesting to revisit the shift swapping um, due to officers shift swapping with each other at that time. Part-time part -time officers, right? Yes. So I felt that it was appropriate for me to see if we could revisit that to see if all officers can do the same thing. Other than part-time officers, are any full-time officers swapping shifts? Not that I'm aware of, but I don't know that for sure. You then go on and claim that you were treated unfairly. Actually, can I, can I back that up, sir? Sure. The lieutenant is considered a full-time officer in this police department, so as I'd like to take that and say, yes, he is swapping. So there is full-time officers swapping shifts. Okay. Um, we'll get to that in a second. You do recognize the distinction between you and the lieutenant, don't you? Yes, he's the lieutenant. I'm a patrol officer. Okay. So do you feel that you should be treated the same as the lieutenant? Absolutely, sir. There is no distinction between you as a patrol officer and he as your superior officer. Is that correct? I feel that everyone in the police department should be treated the same way. You feel that way. Is that based on any policy that you're aware of? We have, we have policies in place that everyone should be treated fairly, yes. And that the lieutenant is not, uh, as a superior officer, is not, 
he's not uh, entitled to conduct himself in a manner different from the uniformed officers, patrol officers? Absolutely not, sir. Tell me when you are aware that uh, the lieutenant swapped shifts with a full-time officer. Back when we used to do it on a consistent basis, regular basis. Okay. But now we're talking about your claim, you're being treated differently because there was a new policy prohibiting shift swaps, and you have now claimed that the lieutenant continues to do it, correct? Yes, no, full-time officers, though, sir. As so, that, that I'm aware of, it's so, part-time officers. All right, so the lieutenant isn't doing it, it's only with the part-time officers. He's shift swapping with part-time officers. Is he shift swapping or is he filling in for part-time officers who are unable to make it to work when required? He, he asked part-time officers to work his, their shift for him. What's the basis of your knowledge of that, Officer Joy? Um, I, don't, I don't believe that's my, uh, my duty to, um, to understand that. That's not, well, my, that's not my business to understand why he asked another officer to fill in for him. It could be anything personal reasons. It's not. No, no, no. Officer Joy, my question is, what is the basis for your assertion that you, Lieutenant Uraskovich has gone to part-time officers and made requests of them to shift swaps? Because I talked to part-time officers and they've told me. Who? Officer Philbrook. And when did you speak to Officer Philbrook? I don't, the, I don't know the exact date, sir. Do you know the year? Uh, 2017. Okay, do you know the month? I don't. We're only four months into the year. It can't be that long ago. I don't recall the month, sir. I know it was in... Four was, it, was it this month? Uh, no, it was not this month. Was it last month? The witness has stated he does not know. And I'm right. trying to narrow sir, in on what he does not I don't recall. I don't and recall. when did you speak to Officer Philbrick? Day, uh, it was, night? Uh, it was during the day, during the detail. Okay, and tell me about that conversation. What did, Phil, what did Philbrick say to you and what did you say to him? Um, Officer Philbrick and I had a conversation about how, I, how, I'm being how I'm being treated fairly. He actually agrees that I'm being treated differently. And he also told me that he doesn't, because Officer Philbrick and I ended up, we did a lot of shift swaps together. They allowed us to do a lot of shift swaps together, him and I, until all of a sudden it stopped. Well, he's told me that lieutenants asked him, hey, can you work here for me? Or him and another officer can't fit, get their schedule straight, so they allow them to swap the shifts. Um, so he's told me that. Okay. Officer, I've, I've all, we've already established that you feel you should be treated like the part-time guys. So I'm not, I'm not really concerned about that. I want you to tell me about your most recent assertion that you have direct knowledge that Sergeant uh, Lieutenant Uraskovich has approached part-time officers and asked to, to swap shifts. You've told me that you had a detail at some point in the last four months, you can't remember when, uh, you had a discussion with uh, part-time officer Philbrook in which he said that Lieutenant Uraskovich <coughs> approached him. Has called him on the phone. Uh, maybe in person, somewhere along the lines, they've communicated to ask them to work a shift for them. That's all you know? That's correct, sir. So somehow spoke to them about something somewhere. Can we bring this? Yeah. Um, I have a schedule here where it shows that on the schedule that lieutenant's number was crossed off and put into a part-time position. Do you know why that happened? I do not. Okay, you have a copy for me? Sure. Move back to number two. Other than your uh, meeting with Officer Philbrick on this detail, at some point where he told you in some way uh, Uraskovich communicated with him. Do you have any other evidence that Sergeant Lieutenant Uraskovich has swapped shifts with part-time officers since the <coughs> change in policy? Uh, just the uh, schedule and my communication with Officer Philbrick. The one you just told us about, correct? Yes, sir. And then what we've marked is number two, which is a photograph of a 
schedule and you have no idea what the background is in that, correct? That's correct, sir. May I have one moment? Next, bring up uh, the differential treatment on the physical agility test because it's written you were led to believe there was a one or done policy, correct? Yes, sir. Do you feel you were somehow treated unfairly as a result of that? Yes, I do, sir. You, in fact, failed the physical the first time you applied to the Rollinsburg Police Department, did you not? Before I was hired, yes. And yet you were hired, correct? Yes, sir. So, if there was a one-and-done policy, it was broken for you, right? No, sir, because that's not after employment. Okay, well, let's talk about, uh, you've also identified another officer, Matthew Bailey. You've named a number of officers throughout your grievance, haven't you? Yes, sir. And you said that Matthew Bailey uh, was treated differently, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, he failed the test on more than one occasion, right? Yes, sir. He wasn't hired after he filed the test, was he? He was, he was fired, right? He was working as I was, as a full-time police officer for the town of Rollinswood at the time. And then he failed the physical, and he was terminated, correct? After a few chances, yes, sir. Well, after each chance, he was terminated, wasn't he, officer? After each chance, he failed? He after each time he failed the test, he was no longer a Rollinsford police officer. Then he took the test again, he failed it again, he was no longer a Rollinsford police officer. Sir, he was still working at the time when he was a, when he, after he was failing, he was still working FTO. So it's your testimony that the department continued to employ, well first of all, were you aware of Officer Bailey's uh, scores on the physical agility test? I was just aware he failed, sir. And how did you become aware of that? Uh, he, he told me. Okay. I mean, and how, after, the after the failure, how can, long can did, he, uh, wait, did he continue to wait. work? Tell me, Officer Joy, is it your testimony that Mr. Bailey remained constantly employed by the town of Rollinsford <coughs> despite having failed the physical agility test one, two, three <coughs> times and that his employment by Rollinsford was never interrupted? Is that your testimony? I'm not understanding what you're saying, sir. You're claiming that you were treated differently because you failed the test, and you were then brought back and allowed <coughs> to, and weren't hired, then you were brought back. When you did pass the test, you were allowed to remain on the force, correct? No. <coughs> well, then explain to me where, where I'm wrong. I, I applied for the Rollinsford Police Department. Before the process, the beginning process is a physical agility test. I didn't pass that. So I was out of the process completely, so I was never hired. Let me interrupt you for a second. That wasn't the state test, was it? It's the same standard, sir. Well, it wasn't the state test, was it? It was the locally we used conducted. That, we used that test for state standards. Okay. Officer, focus on my question. You changed when, the subject when you, question. No, I'm, I'm focusing on this you answer. You interrupted him, and you've gone down a standard <coughs> on different no, I, standards I, I, of tests. I, I, I'm not at all. He's saying that he was hired after, that he wasn't hired after he failed the test. Correct. And there is no tangent here. If you, if you want to ask him questions on redirect, go for it. Officer, the first time that you applied to the Rollinsford Police Department, the state uh, agency was not conducting the physical test, was it? Who's the state agency, sir? Where 
The police is we it have police standards and training this is council? not even the basis of our grievance here. We're not even talking about his testing before he was hired as a police officer. No, you're, you're talking about other people being treated differently when your own Wilder. client was given the very same latitude no, that he's sir. complaining you others. No, misunderstand. That was before well, he was employed. You can ask him the questions to clarify. When and I would object to the board as this is outside the scope of our grievance. Officer, when you were first hired by Rollinsford, you were given a preliminary physical exam that you failed, correct? Yes, sir. And you are not one and done. You were brought back, were you not? Sir, I was not employed at the time. I you were I, brought back, and you were... Asked and answered. You were hired, were you not? He I was asked given it, an, he, he asked, you asked, okay. he answered it. Is that correct? Sir, I've already asked. Okay. Was Officer Bailey administer the test by the town of Rollinsford or by the Police Standards and Training Council? Both. Do you know, is it your testimony... On a weekly basis, sir. Is it your testimony that Officer Bailey remained employed during the course of all of those physical agility tests, which he failed, and that he was never relieved of his employment by the town of Rollinsford. Is that your testimony? He stayed employed while failing his PT test. Okay. And you said three to four times. At least, sir, yes. Okay. Over what period of time did Officer Bailey remain employed while failing the physical agility test? A few months. I don't know the exact, but a few months. But you're quite sure of your testimony that his employment was never interrupted as a result of failing a physical agility test. Is that correct? He was still as a, working as on the road as an FCO officer. Okay. So he's employed as a full-time officer? Well, failing the PT test, yes. Okay. Repeatedly? Yes. And you would swear that as well, correct? That he failed the PT test? I'm, I guess I'm confused. I'm just asking you, to, you just said that he continued to work as a full-time officer for several weeks while repeatedly filing, failing the physical agility test, didn't you? Yeah, he was still working, I yes. And still working, having failed the test repeatedly, yes. isn't that what you said? Yes, yes. Okay. And you would swear to that? Yes. You then claim that you were uh, discriminated against because you had you were administered the physical agility test by an officer whose certification for that purpose had lapsed. Correct. I object. I don't recall saying the word discrimination or saying he was discriminated against. Isn't that why we're here? Well, you're saying you then said you were discriminated against. That word's not in there. I didn't use it, so I'd ask well, that I'm you're going to quote him. Well, then don't attribute it to him. Okay. Do you feel you were treated differently, unfairly, badly, because you were given a test by someone that was not certified to give the test, right? Yes. And the trouble that you had to go to to clarify that constituted three emails? I don't know how many, sir. I'd have to go back. Well, let me show them to you. <clears throat>
Yes, sir. Have you read that string of emails? Yes, sir. I was off by one. You had to send two emails to clarify that, didn't you? I sent some emails, sir. Yes. You sent two. You sent one on Sunday, May 3rd at 2.04 p.m. to a lieutenant at the Police, Police Standards and Training Council explaining that you had been, you passed the test, but the person who certified you had her certification expired, correct? Yes. And the response was, I'll refer this to the chief. And then the next is, I'll get an answer for you if you could tell me who conducted it. Then you sent a second email, and you gave the officer's name as Bronwyn Bronsfield, part-time officer for my department, right? Yes, sir. And then they said, taken care of, right? They sent an email saying they would take care of the situation as it was not my fault, sir. So you put this, this disparate treatment, that you're being treated differently because of this non-certified officer and the problem that you faced was sending two emails, right? No, the problem that I faced, sir, is I had to take the test again. Well... And I, I didn't think that was acceptable when I already passed the test. Then when Timothy Merrill at the Police Standards and Training Council wrote, because this is no fault of yours, we will accept the medical clearance and fitness testing forms now as long as they appear to be in order. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Yes, sir. That sounds... Yeah. So they said you're all set. Don't yes. worry about that. Yes, sir. But I had to take care of it all myself, by myself. You had to send those two emails all by yourself? Correct, sir. Okay. What is that, four? If you're marking it, that would be three by my count. Next, you feel that you've been treated unfairly because someone else has been allowed to become a firearms instructor in less time than you were required to wait, correct? Yes, sir. And once again, your problem is with Officer Hancock, correct? I wouldn't say I had a problem with him, sir, but... Well, he's the... He's mentioned he, in this, yes, sir. Well, he's the reason that you feel you're being treated differently, right? Yes, but I don't have a problem with him. Now, first of all, you say it's typical to have two instructors in the department. Is, is there any prohibition from having three? Uh, since I've been there, we've only had two. Are you aware of any prohibition against having three? According to policy, whereas you have three years to become a P, uh, firearm instructor. And if you don't meet those requirements, you cannot be a firearms instructor. So that wouldn't that be a prohibition? Let's go back to my question. Do you know of any prohibition against having three firearms instructors? Not three, no, sir. Okay. Are you aware that Officer Hancock is undergoing training for any other position outside of the Ronaldsburg Police Department? Yes, I do, sir. What is that? Uh, he's trying to get on the tactical team. The SWAT team? SWAT team tactical, yes. <coughs> And are you aware of administrative decisions that his chances of qualifying for that assignment would be enhanced if he had undergone the firearms training protocol? <clears throat> Sir, I was told by Officer Hancock that they have a policy um, that does not allow him to enter onto the SWAT team uh, because he's only been an officer for a year and a half. So. Now back to my question, officer. Are you familiar with an administrative decision that his attempts to get on the tactical team would be enhanced if he had certification as a firearms instructor? I believe that's one of the requirements that they have, so it probably enhances. Okay. And you, of course, had no part in any administrative decisions regarding Officer Hancock, did you? Uh, no, sir. Have you been impacted at all by Officer Hancock's receiving certification as a firearms instructor? Objection relevance. Have I been? No, I have not. Has Officer Hancock acted as a firearms instructor for the Rollinsford Police Department? Not to my knowledge yet. So as far as you know, the only purpose in having him qualify as a firearms instructor would be to enhance his chances of finding a position on the regional tactical team, correct? Yes, 
this. Next we go to the incident that prompted the discipline we're here to uh, discuss. You do concede that you missed the training at the Lee Police Department, correct? I did not miss it, sir. I, I did not miss it. I was told not to go. You didn't go, did you? That's correct, sir. That would have been late, sir. And do you know what the scheduling was, officer? I'd have to look at an email. To well, that's we're here about that. You're, you're familiar <coughs> with with what you missed, aren't you? Or what yes, was canceled? Yes, okay. Sir. How was it set up? Uh, through email, sir. What were what were the what was the training that was to be undertaken? I believe it's a, it was a simunitions training, I believe. You don't even know. No. You don't know what it was. It was uh, it's for firearms. Something to do with firearms. Training. I don't know the exact name, sir. It was, it was, uh, and how many uh, how many slots were there available on the date of the training? I don't know, sir. Do you know if you were assigned a time on that date? On the date that I missed that yes. date? Yes, I was. And you weren't there at that time, <clears throat> were you? That's correct, sir. And then you were told by Lieutenant Uraskovich not to come because by the time he got there, it would be too late, so it's canceled. He did right? not say that, sir. He told me not to go because it was canceled. He just said the whole thing was canceled? Yes, sir. Why weren't you there to begin with? Uh, just miscommunication. What do you mean miscommunication? I thought it was the day after. You haven't said that. You never said that to anyone, did you? I've I've made my administrators aware. That's that's why I missed it. Sir, I do have text messages here to confirm. Sure, let me see. Okay, so you had a uh, you had a text message or exchange with the um, chief on January third, saying detail tomorrow in town with Eversource eight hundred. Want it? You wrote back. And this is at one o'clock. I have training in Lee. The chief said, you're in Lee today at 2. That's correct, sir. Did you hop in your car? No, sir. I, I put my phone down, and I didn't look at my phone until approximately, I believe, it was half an hour after that. Well, but, the, uh, next, the next message from you after the 1 o'clock message is at 2.25. That's correct, sir. That's when I looked at my phone again. And I will swear to that, and, sir. Oh, Will told me we had training tomorrow morning. Who's Will? Will Hancock. That's why I ended up changing the date on my phone. So sir. again, it was Hancock's issue? He, you listened to say, Hancock? Sir, I didn't say it was Hancock's issue at all, sir. Okay. So that's just communication between Will and I. Okay. Where do you live? Berwick, sir. And where was the training? Lee. How long does it take you to get to Lee from Berwick? Probably 15 to 20 minutes, sir. Okay. So when you at, wait a second. 
you said that the next time you looked at your phone after the chief telling you at 1 o'clock that you had a training in Lee at 2 was 2.25, correct? Yet, you're texting Lieutenant Uraskovich, who at 2.01 is saying, on your, on your way, you're saying, on my way, question mark? So at 2 o'clock, no, at 1 o'clock, you knew your training was at 2. You could have been there no, without a problem, No, I didn't know, sir, at that time. The chief of the department told you you are in leave at 2. Sir, I didn't look at that message until approximately half an hour after. I didn't have my phone on me at that time. Well, an hour later, Uraskovich is saying, are you on your way? And you're saying, on my way, question mark. I guess I'm, I'm, I gotta look at him. I have to look at him. Well, look at him. <clears throat> for those, I'll apologize for not having a copy. I didn't realize that counsel would be here. This is all the same time. Here, you need to explain that. Yeah. Sir, this Tuesday, January 3rd, 1401, this is all the same time. Let me. That's why there's no there's no different times because it's all in one, one conversation. Well, there are different times. Yeah, here there is, sir, but not here. This well, is all one conversation at 1401. Well, then I, I just asked you before when you. May I make a suggestion? Can we just mark them so we know which ones for the record, which sure. ones we're talking about? Yes. Is this the same phone? My phone, yes. So this is the, these text messages are on the same phone? My phone, yes. I'm going to write at the top of this one, Chief. And I believe that becomes Exhibit 4. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And then that one will do Lieutenant and make that Exhibit 5, if that works. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. So it's clear, uh, sir, at 1 o'clock, you were told by the chief that you are to sir, be in... I need to, I need to see it, sir. At 1 o'clock, you are told that you are to be in Lee at 2 o'clock. 12.56. He asked me if there's a detail, detail tomorrow with Eversource. I said, I have training in Lee. I put and my he, phone down, and that was it until 2.25, sir. Well, then why at, are we at 2.01? Because that's, bef that's before 2.25, sir. Yeah. This so was our conversation before the chief and I had conversation. So lieutenant's the first person I had conversation with. Well, no, he's not, officer. Look at, look at you're talking to lieutenant, uh, the chief at 1 o'clock. The chief at 1 o'clock tells you you've got to be in Lee at 2. So that was the end. Is that correct? Sir. Is that correct? At two at one o'clock at twelve fifty six, he told me. He asked me if I wanted a detail. I then replied at the same time. That's why these are together. At the same time, I have training in Lee, and that was it. That's all I had at that time, and I put my phone down. Well, you just told me that it's the same exchange because there's no time between them. So based on what you just told me about your text messages, officer, you had a direct exchange with with the chief who asked you about a detail you said I can't he said in the very next message with no time stamp between it you're supposed to be in Lee at 2 o'clock tomorrow or yes. 2 o'clock today he did write that sir right yes. so and you got that right after you sent your message right because there's no, no change sir. in time no sir you're not is that what you just told me officer that because there are different time stamps you said they're all together because there's only one time, right? Didn't you say that? These here, sir. Right. These are these are different conversations. So look at these three, which you got at one o'clock. You're in Lee today at two. You didn't do anything to get to Lee at two. He wrote you? that, yes, but I and did you, not see that on my phone at that time. So he sent it to you immediately, based on the way Correct, you told me your phone works. Correct, sir. No. But you just put it down. Correct, sir. I'll swear to that. And then, so, then you're confused when the lieutenant says, on your way, 
and you say, what was it? I don't have anything in my phone. The Lee Training 705, the Lee Training 705 told me it was tomorrow morning. You're writing that after the chief had told you an hour before that you were doing Lee at 2 o'clock, aren't you? No, sir. I'm not. Well, the time, did I just read correctly what the, you were the, writing to Lieutenant Duraskovich? Yes, sir. But the, these times aren't, they're not consistent on my, on my testimony. So. Well, officer, I've I, asked I, you about the, the time in your phone. You told me if the times are together, they indicate that they're one message. So you had three quick exchanges it. with the chief at 1 o'clock. Yep. And then with Duraskovich, I'm sorry, at, at 1 o'clock. I'm sorry. You were correct. At 1 o'clock. And then at 2 o'clock, you're telling Uraskovich, I thought it was canceled. I don't have anything in my phone. The lead training told me it was tomorrow morning. This was All those excuses yeah, came an hour later, right? Uh, so I, I can't. The times aren't. I know what I did, sir. So I don't, I don't, I, so I don't know if these times right here are accurate. There's no times here, so I don't know what time. But It's your phone, isn't it? What's that? It's your phone, right? Yes, it is, sir. And you've told us how the timestamp works in your phone, haven't you? It's yes, it's that's how I usually. I based it on that phone, mm -hmm. your phone records, it indicates that the, the chief told you at one o'clock you were doing Lee, and at two o'clock you're telling the chief, the lieutenant, that you thought things were canceled, that you were confused, things of that nature, right? Yes, sir. I wrote these. There's no suggestion. filed your grievance with the chief, you didn't write anything about Will Hancock giving you bad information, did you? No, I did not, sir. That's the first time you've, you've put that in writing anywhere or stated that is time, right? Yeah, yes, sir. When you were grieving that write-up, you said that you were confused, but you didn't get notified enough, right? Can you repeat the question, please? Well, let me read it. You the paragraph? <clears throat> yep. Um, under the number three paragraph, you wrote, I've been employed by town, with the town of Rollinsford for five years. I show up to work, do my job, and do it well. I take full responsibility on being absent for this training. It was an honest mistake. You, Lieutenant Uraskovich never notified me that he and I were doing the training together on January 3rd, 2013. And there were no reminders about this training between November 9th to January 3rd. Well, you weren't doing the training with Lieutenant Uraskovich, were you? Later, I found out later, no. You just didn't know what, where you were supposed to be or what you were supposed to do that day, did you? Not that day, no, sir. Okay. And you said you didn't get uh, notifications. Do you think after telling you to be somewhere, the, the department has an obligation to stay on top of you to make sure you don't forget these professional obligations? Yes, they do. That's not part of your job as a police officer to <coughs> notate it's my, professional it's, obligations? It's my responsibility, too, sir. But if they don't notify you, you can, you can just not show? No, sir. I, I forgot about the training day. That's why I didn't well, show. Sometimes. You got a couple notifications, didn't you? Uh, one, sir. Well, you got one on January 28th, didn't you? Yes, sir. After you got one on November 9th. January 28th, sir, was addressed to patrol, not just to me. Well, there was an email to you that was open.
Let me show you, Oscar. There's an email. Show you the full thing. This is a report that shows emails sent in red. Here's the November 28th notification of the Sci Munitions training. It is indicated that it was sent. Sir. Let me finish. It was sent. It was sent to you on the 9th of November, and then you read it, correct? You see your name indicating that you opened and read that email? November 9th, yes, sir. And then if we look at December 28th, you see that you opened and read that email. Yes, sir. So after getting two notifications, one days before the lead training, you somehow became confused about where and when you were supposed to be, is that correct? Yes, sir. And as a result, you feel that the department's action in disciplining you is somehow inappropriate? Yes, sir. Why? Because, sir, on the first email that I received on, on November 11, 2016 at 1502, um, gave me the scheduled training uh, to be in Lee for January, uh, it's cut off here, uh, from 2 to uh, 3.30. So 1,400 to 15.30 hours. Uh, please make note on your calendar. So I did that in my phone. I did make proper notes in my phone. So I didn't hear anything until January, uh, sorry, excuse me, uh, December 28th at 15.02, um, dated to patrol. Um, for those attending the simunitions training in Lee next week, the uniform of the day is your regular uniform without the firearm or taser. So I figured since it was addressed to patrol, I've had, I had conversations with other patrol officer, uh, a patrol officer, and that's why I changed the original date to the day after, and that's why I was confused, because I thought we were all going together. Did you want to mark those as six? Yeah. Nobody else missed the training, did they, officer? Uh, I don't know that for sure. They, I was told that they did not. So with all the confusion you experienced, no one else experienced that confusion to your knowledge? Apparently not, sir. And then at the end of your, uh, that paragraph, um, you talk about another er officer, Eric White, missed the scheduled department training. Are you, right? are you back on my grievance or the one he wrote to the chief? Yeah, I'm sorry, yours. would be seven. Six was the emails regarding the simulation training. Okay. Uh, you then complain that Eric White uh, was not disciplined for missing a scheduled department training, correct? That is correct, sir. Once again, you are referring to a part-time officer, right? That is correct, sir. Are you familiar with any full-time uniform officer who has missed training and not been disciplined for it? Uh, I have no, uh, no one, that, uh, they've never told me no, if they have, so I'm not, uh, no. We then go to overtime. You claim that there is a department policy in place that overtime is based on rank and then seniority, correct? Sorry, repeat that, sir. The grievance next notes that the department has a policy in place that overtime is available based first on rank and then on seniority, correct? Yes, sir. Where is that written? Uh, it's in, it's under a policy, uh, I don't know the exact policy number. It's in there, the there is no written policy, is there? On overtime. On overtime? Right. There is a policy on details. There is no policy on overtime, is there? That's correct, sir. Okay. So 
when you say that you're not offered overtime opportunity, are you saying detail opportunities? It's the it's the same rate of pay, sir. So I believe that's overtime. But the policy doesn't say overtime. It says details, doesn't it? That's correct, sir. Okay. So you've just extrapolated that it also means overtime. Yes, sir. Because it is overtime, sir. It's just working at a special event, but it's all overtime. You get paid the same same rate and everything. But the policy doesn't say that, right? It's, it's the policy says overtime. It's a detail. Detail, sorry, excuse me. It doesn't details. say overtime. Correct. Right? Details. Okay. So. Once again, you're complaining about Officer Hancock's treatment as it relates to you, correct? Uh, yes, sir. And you wrote that the lieutenant shifted a swap with Officer Hancock to allow him overtime, correct? Uh, I don't know if it was to allow him overtime. But that he got overtime as a result? That's correct, sir. How do you know that it was a shift swap? I don't know if it was a shift swap. In fact, it wasn't a shift swap, was it? I don't know, sir. Do you know what the lieutenant used vacation time? I don't, sir. So this is just wrong. Or you don't know if it's true or not, right? I know that Officer Hancock worked four hours of overtime. He received overtime pay for it. But you said the lieutenant's shift, a shift swap prohibited by the policy. that the lieutenant, well, I'll read the sentence. He made a trip to Concord, and this is um, Hancock. He made a trip to Concord to drop fingerprints off and pick up evidence. He then covered four hours of lieutenant shift Paren, a shift swap that is prohibited by policy, closed Paren, who was leaving on vacation. You have no basis to assert that that was a swap and shifts, do you? I don't know. I don't, sir. I don't know if it was a shift swap. So that's, that's just got no business in there, that, that sentence. Okay. Correct? I guess so, sir, yes. shifts that you swap for prior to the policy, you were swapping with part-timers to get out of weekend shifts, correct? No, sir. I was uh, also swapping with a full-time officer as well. But you were regularly swapping out of weekends, correct? Yeah, that we were using it to our benefit, yes. And you were swapping primarily with part-timers, weren't you? Yes, I'd say so, yes. So the other officers were working their weekend shifts, but you were primarily, you were regularly shifting out of those, swapping out of those with part-timers so that they were working your week, weekend shifts, right? That wasn't, that wasn't the point, sir. I, I did my rotation. I still worked weekends as well. It's not like I swapped every weekend off. You didn't swap we, every, but you swapped several weekends. The way, our, the, way the, the way the days off work, we'd take an extra day, so we'd get like three, three or four days off. Um, we use them in conjunction with your days off so you could get more time off. And vice versa for them as well. So it, wasn't, it wasn't just for me. Like if, they, if I swapped with them, 
they would also get another day off on their end too. So it worked out for both people. Well, officer, are you aware that your habits of swapping shifts is what prompted the policy against swap shift swapping? I'm not aware of that, sir. First I've heard of it. Going back to overtime, uh, you claim that you aren't uh, <coughs> treated fairly as it relates to overtime, even though there's no policy for it, but you're regularly unavailable for overtime requests, aren't you? I work quite a bit of overtime, so I don't know for that. Well, let me just uh, tick through a couple. On January 1st, I'm sorry, February 1st, 17, you were asked for work detail, you weren't available. February 3rd, Request for work detail not available. February 5th, request for work detail not available. February 9th, not available. 14th, not available. March 9th, stay 8 to midnight to cover a meeting. You ask to leave early. March 13th, you requested a work deal. Work detail, you got two and a half hours. March 15th, Asked to stay 8 to 12 to cover the storm. Asked to leave early. March 21st, 17, request work detail, not available. March 28th, asked for work detail, no response. Does that make uh, does that Sir, make I'm sense? not I'm not aware of any of this right now. This is the first I've heard of this. Well, will you agree with me that you didn't work overtime details on any of those Sir, days? So there, there are, yeah, there are details I turned down because it does not fit into my schedule, absolutely. But it's not because I don't want the money. It's just that, you know, I can't, I can't work all the time. You need a break, sir. It's just not convenient. I, yeah, if you want to use that, I guess so, yes. Doesn't fit with the schedule, sir. Officer, you've had disciplinary citations removed from your file, haven't you? Yes, I have, sir. Your citation for missing the Lee training came shortly after you failed to show up for a detail at UNH for moving day, correct? Yes, sir. See, that is a problem that you don't show up for a detail? Sir, I don't believe that's in my personnel file right now. No, but you did it, right? Or you didn't do it. You didn't show up for. Uh, you didn't show up when you were when you were assigned a detail, did you? No, sir, I didn't. Okay. I was and, late, sir. I would have been late again, unfortunately. And then they told you you were so late, don't bother to come, right? Yeah. And that's exactly what happened at Lee, right? You said, "Oh, I'm late," and they said, "Don't bother to come." No, Can't. I didn't say that, sir. Said the, the the training in Lee has been canceled. That's what he said. Well, sir. the training in Lee wasn't canceled that day for anyone except you, was it? I don't I don't know, sir. Are you aware that anyone else had their their slot canceled? Not that I'm aware of. So as far as you know, yours was the only one that was canceled. As far as what the text message said, yes, sir. Right. And that's based on the text messages that you showed us. That you the one you got at, at one o'clock telling you that you had to be in Lee at two, and then your Two o'clock text messages with Lieutenant Uraskovich saying you thought it was canceled, you were confused. Is that, is that correct? I was confused, yes, sir. And based on that, you feel that somehow the imposition of a one day suspension is unfair to you? Yes, I do, sir. I have nothing else. This time, um, unless you had anything more, did you want to? I would like to ask sure. a follow-up question, Jess. Regarding the towing policy, I'll just ask you a couple questions, if I may. Uh, the issue uh, where you noted about Officer Hancock violating that policy as well. From your perspective, um, were you aware if the supervisors knew of it? Uh, he's made mention to me that uh, a supervisor has told them that he cannot do it. Okay, so. So at the time, I spoke to him about it, yes. When you heard that 
from him, you weren't under the obligation that no one knew. Now, when we reference policies in here, are you aware of any policies that distinguish between part-time and full-time employees of the department? No. Is the towing policy different for part-time employees than it is for full-time employees? It is not. Are you aware of um, any other policies that are different for part-time than full-time employees? It is not. Do the policies generally regard all employees of the Rollins for Police Department? Yes, they do. Now, Council asked you questions about shift swapping and other matters that would benefit part-time employees because they work less, is that correct? So allowing them to take these would um, potentially give them more options. Yes. Now you started talking about doing shift swaps benefited them as well. What are you, what are you talking about there? How do shift swaps benefit them as well? If they, if they are not able to work that day, uh, they communicate amongst themselves and are able to swap so if one part-timer can't work this day, this part-timer can, they'll swap over. They'll swap days. That happens on a con regular basis. Would a part-timer ever ask a full-timer to switch uh, or to swap? We would when it was allowed, but not any longer. That's what I'm talking yes. about. At the time period when it was allowed. Yes. We. Yes. So it would go both ways. Yes. Now, about the physical agility test, what was your main concern regarding you having to deal with that matter? I was, I was, you know, it's, it's a lot of work and uh, to get into shape and, you know, when you're, when you get that to that point where it takes a lot of work to get to that point, you go and successfully pass the test, <coughs> exceeding the 50th percentile, which is really good, um, and all of a sudden you're told before you go on vacation that that test doesn't count and I have to go to Lee Police Department to retake the test. That's a concern for me um, based on a, a part-time officer certification lapsed. And do you think since her certification had lapsed that the police department should have done something to help you with that? Yes, I do. And did they do anything to help you with they that? They did not. And where were you when you were sending those emails? Dominican Republic. Now, there was also a question about, I believe it was Officer Bailey, um, several questions about whether he remained employed um, during the time when he failed the tests. Um, on what information or on what basis is it your recollection that he remained employed? Uh, he was still showing up to work shift, reading policies. You know, it could have been you know, riding around with a supervisor, uh, but he, he stayed, he was in the department because we, we communicated on a regular basis. Um, Do you recall whether he was in uniform on those days? Oh, jeez. There were days he was in uniform, yes. So from your perspective as another officer, did it look like he was performing functions that were all through for himself? Yes, he just wasn't by himself. <clears throat> now, other stuff was brought up regarding the firearms instructor position for Officer Hancock. Um, it was discussed that um, this was a tactic used by the police department to make him eligible for a regional tactical team or a SWAT team, is that correct? That's correct. So from your perspective, does that show that someone gets special treatment if it's in the interest of that officer or the police department? Absolutely. So that's not what the policy reads. And is that an example of what you're grieving and what yes. one of your concerns are? Yes. Now, in terms of these texts, if we can look at um, those Exhibits 4 and Exhibit 5, a lot of were made of the timing of those. Let's start with the Chiefs. This is Exhibit 4. What is your recollection today of the order that you saw those texts? I received a uh, text message from Chief Ducharm asking, de uh, saying, detail tomorrow in town with every source at 08 wanted. I said, I have a training in lead, and that was it. And that was on January 3rd at 1 o'clock? Yes. So at that point, your perspective was you could not do that detail because you had a training in Lee. That's, that's correct. Okay. Yes. And do you recall seeing that you were in Lee today at 2? Uh, not at 2 o'clock, no. 
or not at the time of this? Right, not at the time of that. Okay. Correct. Do you have a specific memory of when you saw them? Yeah, it was approximately around uh, 225 area. And is that when you responded to them? Uh, yes. Okay. And that was my response. And that's when you told them that you thought it was the next day? That's correct. Okay. Now, on your phone, is it possible to receive a text and you not open it and see it? Oh, absolutely. Now I'm going to reference Exhibit 5, which is from the lieutenant. So this is at 2.01, um, and he asks if you're on your way. Yeah. And your response is? On my way. With a question mark? Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. Like, on my way where? What, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah, I just, I don't really know. I just put on my way. Question mark would mean, are you on your way to it? So yeah, it'd be on my way to where? All right, and then he said what? Down and it has been canceled. And then, then I said, what was it? Keep going. I don't have anything in my phone. That Lee Training 705 told me it was tomorrow morning. Chief sent everyone an email with their date and time. So at this point, you're even referencing to him that you thought it was the yeah, next day. The next day. But you concede that you did not go there. Correct. All right. But when you got this text, if you wanted to go there, could you have at the time? Yes, because I was scheduled to work. And why didn't you go? Because uh, it was canceled. And on what basis did you rely on the fact that it had been canceled? That text message. From whom? Lieutenant Yaraskovich. And how long would it have taken you to get there from your home? 15, 20 minutes, depending on traffic. Now, in terms of overtime, um, a lot has been made versus the word detail versus overtime. Um, do you recall in the policy which is used for overtime? D it's under details. Okay. And are details defined in that policy? I'm not, I don't recall, but I believe, I'm sure they are. From I don't. Okay, I apologize, I didn't mean to speak over you. No, from, I'm sure they are, but I don't, I don't recall exactly what's said in the policy. Do you view doing details as well as getting overtime to be the same type of thing? Yes. Why is that? Because uh, it's over my, anything over my 40 hours, and that every time I pick up a detail shift that's for overtime, it's for overtime hours, they get paid overtime rate. Right. Details aren't any special rate, right? it's the same rate right as overtime. And with the details, it does have a structure as it goes seniority first? Uh, rank. rank. It was first. changed rank, then seniority. Okay. And what if, is that for all officers or just full time? I believe all officers. Are part time officers allowed to participate in details? Yes. When do they get out? I believe if they can't fill, um, if there's a conflict in shifts uh, with full timers, or if the full timers don't pick up a detail, they'll, they'll usually pick it up. And is there times when part-timers get to fill details? Yes. So there are times when other officers in the department decline details? Yes. Not just you? Correct. Are officers ever consulted or solicited on feedback for other uh, changes in the department at any point? Like if, the, if there's a policy that the chief's thinking of changing or thinking of adding something new, is there ever a time that you can recall where officers were asked to provide input, whether it's from the lieutenant or the chief or anything like that? Yes, they have. They've, they've sent out emails before on um, you know, different thing changes. You know, they're talking about a new police facility. They've asked to reach out to us and ask for changes, you know, recommendations out of the crew, out of the police patrol officers. And so, yes, they have. Now, there was an email provided to you um, that you sent to Lieutenant um, to use words of counsel asking him to carry his weight. Um, do you recall that email? Yes, I do. You said you disagreed with the tone that it was read out. Absolutely. Okay, so how, how, how would you explain your tone and your purpose in that email? Uh, we were going through a uh, shift change policy. Uh, not, excuse me, not shift change policy. We are um, changing schedules. And it affected everyone except for the Lieutenant. So, and it was, it was the time frame, you know, it's, I felt that it was unreasonable because everyone, and I wasn't just speaking on behalf of myself, I was speaking on behalf of the police department and the rest of the full-time officers. I didn't feel that the, 
the schedule change was a it was a short notice so everyone had plans including myself and I felt hey you know I think I should let them know that we had plans and I think it's if the schedule has to change for the rest of us I think it should change for everyone how would you describe your overall rapport with the lieutenant uh, Ben can you give examples of why you said that? Yeah, our communication levels. I've never met. Um, we've never communicated well since I've be started working here. Um, just, we just don't see eye to eye. We just we don't see eye to eye. And have you made complaints about the lieutenant to the chief? Yes, I have. But has that improved, um, <coughs> worsened, or kept the same? The communication issues that you've had between the lieutenant? It's been the same. What about since the filing of this grievance? Would you say the communication levels between you and the lieutenant have remained the same, worsened, or um, improved? When I filed this grievance, uh, it's, there's no communication at all. Maybe a quick, um, this is what happened last night. Have a good day. Now, does your department keep uh, track of statistics? Yes, they do. All right. How would you uh, say that you've done statistic-wise as an officer? Been on top in all the stats um, since I've been here. And stats, what type of matters are you talking about? Um, arrest, uh, motor vehicle activity. You know, I've been right at the top since I've been here. And it's, we don't get a lot of calls for service in this town. It's a small town. It's a nice town. But a lot of it is proactivity. And I've always gone out and been proactive, and my stats show it. Now, do you enjoy working for the town? Absolutely. I'd like to talk to you about your personnel file that was brought up. Um, there was a conversation you had about stuff that was in it now as compared to stuff that may have been in it before. Mm -hmm. um, is that a, an issue that you've been dealing with? Yes, I have. Okay. Why don't you tell us about what you've been dealing with? Uh, I ended up going through a process with a different agency a couple of years ago. Um, I met with the chief as I thought I was a professional to let him know that there was a I was looking at a different agency and to bring to his attention that you know someone might be stopping by to check out my personnel file at the time there were certain things in my personnel file um, the chief and I discussed that uh, you know we'll, we'll take these out the agency doesn't need to see those so those were no longer in the file at that time so I reported to the agency there was nothing in my personnel file at the time so they came and did a background. They didn't find anything in my personnel file for disciplinary actions. Um, I do know that because I contacted the agency as well and asked them. Um, so they didn't find anything. So within two years from there to the most recent request of my personnel file for review, I noticed those things are back in my personnel file and I had no knowledge of it. So it comes to an issue where if I look for a different agency, they're going to ask me what's in my personnel file. And I'm going to say nothing because the last I knew there was nothing in my personnel file. So now that agency goes to look at my personnel file and that stuff's back in it. And I had no knowledge of it. So when I went and requested this last copy, uh, the chief said let's meet up, uh, set up a meeting and we will get the old stuff out. So I set up a meeting with Chief Ducharme, and we removed the stuff that was already out. So it was out, back in, now it's out again. Um, so I mean that's a huge concern for me when it, you know, when it comes to my personnel file. You should know what's in there, and uh, I didn't. I didn't know things were put back in when, um, at the time. But it's not good because if another agency comes and looks, and uh, I just told them there was nothing, then there is. So. That, that's a huge concern for me. Is that part of the communication issue? That you yes. Um, this is going to be kind of an open-ended question. Is there anything else you'd like the board to consider uh, in terms of your agreements? I do. Um, going back to the mis mistraining, there was an officer in this department. I know this firsthand because I talked to him. He's a great guy. And he missed the training 100%. And he even told me he expected to be written up. He was not, nor was he even spoken to about it. And I'd like to, uh, I'd like to leave it at that. A couple follow-ups. Um, 
Officer, you're concerned about other uh, agencies seeing your personnel file because there are a number of violations in it, aren't there? Not anymore, sir. Well, even when certain issues were removed, there were still citations against you for violating departmental policy, were there not? Yes, sir. Okay. So, you can see that you've got a number of violations in your personnel policy, but some others you wanted removed, and you're afraid they weren't removed, right? Sir, I actually did not want them removed. It was a, it was brought up that they were going to be removed, and I agreed to it. Okay. You're not suggesting that you have an uncheckered past in this department, are you? Everyone makes mistakes, sir. Okay. And you've made your fair share, haven't you? Yes, I have, sir. Okay. For instance, you were uh, mistaken about the overtime policy, weren't you? You said that it's all the same. But if I show you the Rollinsburg Police Department um, policy, it defines extra duty employment equals private details, doesn't it? Yes. It doesn't say overtime. That policy talks about private details, right? Yes, sir. And that's the only policy that deals with assignment of overtime, earning details based on rank and seniority, right? Yes, sir. So your, your statement before that it's all the same isn't inconsistent with the policy, is it? There's, that's specifically a detailed policy. There is no overtime policy. There is no overtime policy. Right? That's correct. So when you said that overtime is assigned based on rank and seniority, you were just dead wrong, weren't you? I wouldn't say dead wrong, sir. Am I misreading this somehow? There 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 is no there is no policy for overtime. That's for details. Right. So there is no policy for assignment of overtime based on rank or seniority, is there? No. So when you say you were treated unfairly based on overtime, that's not correct, is it? I feel that I was treated unfairly. Despite the fact that you don't dispute that you were ever not offered a detail before someone... I guess your attorney wants you to read something more. Your passive notes while I'm questioning? I just put something down, yes. It's an illusion. Um, you're not alleging that someone junior to you was given an opportunity for a detail, a private detail, before you are, were, are you? No. Okay. So you agree with me that in the assignment of overtime, there's been no violation of departmental policy, correct? As it relates to you? Yes. You said you had bad communications with the lieutenant. Right? Yes, sir. Lieutenant has been the primary person who is in charge of disciplining you, isn't he? Uh, up to the, yeah, the last couple of years, he has yeah. been, yes. Would you agree with me that if there is a repeated issues with discipline, the communication between the supervising officer and the patrol officer may well break down? The possibility, yes, sir. In your last statement, you said an officer missed the training. Are you saying the Lee training? No, sir. Department training. So that was the one I asked you about before. Once again, we're talking about a part-time officer, right? Yes, sir. And that's who you want to be acquainted with, is the, is the part-time officers, right? Yeah, yeah, the same policies okay. and procedures, right. sir. I have nothing else.
Or not enforcing it. Yeah, you okay. know, was, if you want me to explain, I sure. I think that would be helpful. We've heard a lot about it. But yeah, uh, just a, just a couple of things. You know, uh, the department that I came back uh, came from, um, we used our discretion. So it got it took me a little bit at first to get away from that discretion. So we so for example, if you uh, stop a vehicle and the driver is suspended, this was one of the cases. The driver suspended. Um, she was just over the line of Southborough, probably a couple miles from Southborough. Uh, she was suspended in New Hampshire. Well, her boyfriend, her husband at the time, was close by. So to save her a towing charge, I still gave her a summons for the suspension violation. I allowed him to come to from Maine to pick up the vehicle to allow so it wouldn't she wouldn't end up getting charged a towing fee. Um, that's not how it's supposed to work. Um, another one was I arrested intoxicated driver. The passenger was sober. I allowed the passenger to drive the vehicle. That's not how it's supposed to work. Um, so those are those are the issues that I got right now. For. So, um, Mike, why don't you, um, so I can call them, you want to grab a seat there, or at least swap a seat there. Um, in the first instance, I'll call, um, I guess, uh, Lieutenant John Ross. Yes, sir. As with uh, Officer Joy, I'm going to tick through the uh, grievance, hopefully more quickly, uh, and ask you a series of questions. In the first instance, as we sit here today, um, the grievance suggests that Officer Hancock is was somehow treated differently than uh, Officer LaJoy. Are, do either of them have write-ups in their personnel folders regarding uh, violations of the towing policy? Not to my knowledge, sir. Would Officer Hancock be treated differently, uh, at least in, in earlier in his career, than <clears throat> Officer LaJoy? When you have a rookie officer, you need to be very careful how you treat them because the last thing you want to do is destroy any momentum that they are making in their career, especially if they're just coming off FTO. In this town, oh, sorry, what's FTO? Uh, field training, sorry. In this town, we war, uh, run one person a shift for the most part. Sometimes there's some double coverage, sometimes a part-time will ride second car. But for the most part, it's one guy on and that's it. I expect rookie officers to make mistakes, especially the fact that they're out there by themselves trying to figure out what they haven't seen, because you're not going to see every call on field training. It just isn't going to happen. So yes, am I going to pull aside a brand new rookie and say, hey, you didn't tow this car. From now on, you need to tow it. Let's just end it at that. Sure. And if they keep uh, violating that policy, obviously it's going to escalate into something different. So that's just an example of the tow policy. Did you have any further issues with Officer Hancock uh, after you addressed the towing policy with him? Not one. Uh, shift swaps. Uh, in the grievance, it is stated that uh, since the policy prohibiting, well, first of all, what prompted the change in policy on shift swaps? There were too many swaps being asked for by one particular officer in this department and it was just becoming something that couldn't be tracked with the schedule. 
and then some of those, by the same officer, some of those days that he had actually swapped a shift for, when it was his day to work that swap shift, a couple of times he actually called in sick, which leaves everyone high and dry. And that particular officer is? Jamie LaJoy. Uh, you heard Officer LaJoy testify that you uh, continue to swap shifts with part-timers, particularly Officer Philbrick. Is that correct? Yes. And what is the purpose for that? Officer Philbrick fills in a lot for me, whether I have to go to a meeting for the chief or I am assigned to training or the chief needs me to go somewhere and pick up something or take something somewhere. Um, sometimes I'll fill in, for example, a chief's meeting for Chief Ducharme if he's not available. Obviously, if I'm the only one on, someone has to cover those shifts. So I will, Officer Philbrook is the one that I can count on because he's the one who's around the most. It's just simple that way. In which we were shown this photograph of a, uh, of a schedule with, which apparently demonstrates a shift swap. Do you recall that? Yeah, the uh, part-timer in question had a problem with that Sunday, so I took it. She took my Saturday, plain and simple. Is there a distinction in your treatment of full-time officers and part-time officers? For scheduling purposes? Yes. Yes. Why? Because the full-time officers are hired by the town for 40 hours a week. The part-timers fill shifts when they can. They work outside full-time jobs, and obviously um, they could have conflicts. So they're doing us a service by filling in these open gaps, and if one of them has a conflict and another one can take it, you have to fix that conflict. The only other thing is to fill it with a full-timer who probably doesn't want to work the overtime, and it just it is what it is. It's just part of having part-time officers. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, next we go to the physical agility test. Uh, Officer LaJoy uh, testified that um, he was treated differently, primarily from Matthew Bailey. Can you address that? Sure. Officer Bailey passed our PT test. He was sent through the full-time academy. A week or two left in the academy, I'm not sure the exact time frame, he got injured. It was an injured growing. It took several weeks to heal. So he tried to take the exit exam while he was there, and he did not pass it. You are not going to fire an employee who got injured on the job. So he came back here. He started the FTO process. He was not getting into the field as far as handling calls. I can state that because of the fact I actually had to call backup once to deal with the drunk guy where Matthew was not allowed to touch him because he was injured and was not allowed to go hands-on with him. Um, so we gave Matthew the time to heal. Matthew told us he was good. We sent him back up to the academy. He failed again. At that time, he resigned. Was he hired back? No. He actually just started in Rochester. So other than insulating yourself from uh, litigation for firing someone due to an injury, is there any other example where someone who failed a physical agility test was permitted to continue to work for the Rollinsford Police Department? No, and I have seen two officers that I can think of in the past that have gone up and I received a phone call personally saying they both failed and they both resigned right after. Uh, <clears throat> firearms instructor, uh, Officer Joy asserts that he's treated unfairly because Officer Hancock was permitted to undergo the firearms training despite having not been in the force for three years. How do you address that? Um, actually, I defer that one to the chief. That was okay. something that the decision he made. All right. So I don't know the complete particulars of it. All right, thank you. Uh, you are familiar with uh, the training in the Lee Police Department, correct? Yes. You've heard Officer uh, Joy say that uh, he shouldn't be penalized because the session was actually canceled. How do you address that? The reason it was canceled was because he failed to show. And I'll start from the beginning. I was scheduled from 12.30 to 2. I showed up, I did my time slot. He was supposed to be there at 2, so I was still there. 2 o'clock came, he was not there. And amazing enough, the Lee officer he was supposed to deal with failed to show. The Lee police chief had brought in a member of his select board that was going to watch their time slot for training. I actually stayed to do that training due to the fact that both officers failed to show. It was only after he failed the show that I texted him saying, forget it, it's canceled. And that was his particular time slot because he failed to show up for it. 
the training was never canceled beforehand. It just was no sense at that point for him to come over. You uh, heard me or saw that I showed Officer Joy uh, evidence of uh, emails that were read in November and December detailing the training in Lee, correct? Correct. Did, that, those, did those emails uh, contain the time slots for the training or is that again something for the chief? My personal email had my time slot, date, time, and the reminder in December. To your knowledge, did anyone, any other officer from Rollinsford miss the lead training? No, they did not. Had Officer uh, Joy missed any details prior to missing the lead training? Yes, in August, late August or early September, somewhere in there, um, UNH had contacted us looking for several officers because they were doing their annual move-in day for the freshmen and he was scheduled to go to that. Three officers were scheduled, two showed up, one did not. And the one was? Jamie and Joy. Uh, <clears throat> the grievance complains that Eric White missed a scheduled department training, is that correct? Correct. Was he disciplined? No. Why not? He had not been in the PD for several months actually, and he had not been on the schedule, and therefore being a part-timer, he missed it, and we've moved on from it. Okay. Uh, and finally, uh, it is asserted that uh, Officer Joy was not treated fairly as it relates to overtime. You will agree that the policy, the departmental policy regarding the assignment of, of details for, I'm sorry, based on rank and seniority is limited to private details, will you not? Yes. Is there any departmental policy relating to the, uh, the apportionment of, of straight <coughs> overtime? No, there is not. It is um, alleged that Officer Hancock uh, swapped a shift with you uh, because you were leaving on vacation. Is that correct? That was a complete lie. Why do you say that? I use vacation time. I never switched a shift. I worked from 8 to noon and then used four hours of vacation time from noon to 4. Um, I have my time sheet. It will clearly show that <coughs> if you'd like to submit it as evidence. That's all I have. He did not. He never had to take it a second time. It was managed administratively. They just said yes. Okay, that was based on the two emails. He said correct. Uh, yeah, I don't know what. Um, why don't you just sit here? No, I can just pick the over here. Right. Uh, so you would agree with me then that um, had he failed that test, he would no longer be employed with the Rollins Police Department. That would be a decision for the chief of police to make. But you've just testified that other officers who failed that test no longer work with the Rollins Police Department. That is correct. So is it safe to say there's maybe an unwritten rule that it's one and done? Once you're full time here, yes. Okay. So if he, if he had in fact failed that PT test and the Police Standards and Training Council didn't reconsider that, he may have lost his job. No. He would, because of the error by Officer Dronsfield's cert last week, we definitely would have made sure he took that test again and would have had a chance. We would not have done that to him. Okay. But you guys didn't do anything to remedy that, right? I did not take the call. That was between him and the chief. Um, in terms of this overtime that you just mentioned at the end of your uh, prior testimony, you worked half of your shift and then the other half you used vacation time. Correct. And so a part-time officer filled in for you for that vacation. No, Officer Hancock. I, I apologize. Officer Hancock filled in for you for that. Correct. Four hours. And that was previously scheduled as overtime? For him, yes. Okay. And your vacation was previously scheduled? Yes, it was, and approved. Now, in terms of the training being canceled, did I hear you say that the Lee officer failed to show as well? He did. So a Lee officer failed to show for the Lee training that you were invited to? Correct. And Officer LaJoy, at least at 2 o'clock, failed to show as well? That is correct. And so it was actually, in fact, the combination... They both made. failed to show. So without the trainer, it's kind of hard to have a trainee, right? No, the trainer was there. The trainees were not. So there was a Lee officer who was a trainee. 
no, this was an, this is Primex. They're an outside agency. They're an insurance company who came in and they brought in their own people. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying. So Lee had some officers that were attending as well. Correct. Okay. And so one of their officers failed to show. Correct. Okay. So it wasn't just Officer LaJoy. No, but that's between him and his officer. Correct. But for the, he is not the only one who did not show. For that time slot, correct. Okay. Now, we talked about um, Officer LaJoy um, not showing up for a detail um, at UNH. Correct. Um, you, in fact, recommended a, a formal write-up for him for that, right? I did. Right. And at that point, that was the first time he'd ever not shown up for a detail, correct? I believe so. And probably the first time he had not shown up for a training. That hadn't happened yet, right? I'll let the chief address that. Are you aware of him not showing up for a training prior to that? I'm aware of him having to reschedule a training because he had a previous engagement that he should not have had. Okay. Rescheduling, you would agree, is different than not showing up? Correct. Okay. And you would agree with me, I hope that people get sick sometimes? Absolutely. They can't show up for scheduled things? Sure. Okay. And it's kind of frustrating, right, when someone can't show up for a shift? Absolutely. But it happens. Yes. You have a policy that allows for people to be sick. Correct. Safe to say that you and Officer LaJoy haven't really seen eye to eye? Correct. You're aware he complained about you to the chief? Yes. And so, the first time he doesn't show up for a detail, you're writing a formal write-up? This is a combination of things that have happened over the years. But you would agree that's the first time he didn't show up for a detail? Correct. I, I like I, I'd stay, I can go chapter and verse through his personnel file if you want. I'm just asking questions if you don't mind. I, I don't mind, but I mean, if, if you're going to open that up, that, that as though this was a shot out of the blue, then we could start going through the, the personnel record. Okay. Did I interrupt you like that when you were questioning the witness? You did. Okay. In that case, no thank you. If you want to do that on redirect, by all means. Okay. So you say that newer officers, rookie officers, you treat differently than experienced officers. I expect more on my experience, experienced officers, yes. Okay. But you would agree the policies don't state that rookie officers don't have to follow the policies, senior they, officers? Of course they don't. So the policies are the policies? Yes. You try to figure out the best way for them to learn sure. so that they kind of understand your policies and become better officers? Correct. And one way you do that is by talking with them, explaining it to them, and see how they react. Yes. If that doesn't work, you got to go to the next level. Right, which could be a formal <coughs> write-up in your file. Correct. Now, it's safe to say you don't know what's in someone's personnel file, right? No. You just know what you recommend. Correct. I make the recommendations the chief has the final say. And based on those recommendations, you don't know ultimately what happens? Not all the time, no. And let's say a suspension where it's obvious the person's not. Right. If I'm told to change the schedule because of something, right. I'm not dumb. I put two and two together. Okay. Um, now, Officer Bailey, um, so your testimony is that he only failed this test once at police standards and training That's due to correct. his injury. Correct. And that he never took it again until he ultimately failed it and he let go. He resigned. He took the PT test to get into the academy. Correct. He went through the whole academy, 16 weeks, got injured, took the exit, failed. We brought him back here, did the FTO do the injury. Mm -hmm. So we said, how much time do you need? 60, 90 days? He told us when he felt he was ready. We sent him back up to retake the test at police standards. We did not administer it. Police standards did. And he failed and then ultimately resigned. And that's your information based on his personnel file or your information based on being involved in his... Being involved as lieutenant here. As his training and all that was going on. Right. So if Officer Bailey had told Officer LaJoy he took it three or four times, that would be false? I have no idea what conversations they had. But if he did say that, that would be false? Because your testimony is he only took it once. To my knowledge, he took it at the beginning, at the end, after he then the third time. And only failed two of the three? Correct. That's my knowledge. What he's telling Officer LaJoy, I have no idea. I understood, but if, if you agree with me, if he was saying he took it four times based on your knowledge, that would be false. Again, all I'm going to say is I have no idea what conversation they had. I wasn't there. I, I understand. I'm not asking you to, to verify the conversation, just the facts. In to it. my knowledge, he took it three times. Okay. That's the answer I'll give. Okay. Thank you. I have nothing else. Okay. Question. Let's
Lieutenant, if um, if one of the other officers, either the lead officer or the wrong officer, officer had shown up for that training that day, and we, would the training still have occurred? Both participants need to be there. I would have stayed, and I actually did stay. And another lead officer who just happened to be there joined in with me, and we put on several scenarios for that select board member, so he at least still could see what it was about. Thank you. I've got nothing else. Call Chief Robert to show. <laughs> Chief, you've been present throughout? I have. Okay. And let me jump ahead. Uh, would you address uh, the issues uh, surrounding the policy relating to shift swaps? General, our general policy has been since last year, no swapping of shifts. And the reason for that is because uh, Officer LaJoy, more so than any other police officer here combined, had requested a number of swapping of shifts for a variety of reasons. And it got to the point where uh, it became difficult to manage. And in some cases, as the lieutenant had, had indicated, that uh, you know once the shift was changed, uh, there were an instance, uh, one or two instances where he tried to get out of the, the initial swap and or he called in sick. Uh, so it just made it more difficult for us. Um, so that's why the policy was instituted in the first place. Having said that, you know, our part-time guys work full-time jobs. Some have more than one job. And one, one part-time officer owns his own business. Uh, he specifically mentions Officer Philbrick and Officer Layton. These two gentlemen have worked every single weekend for us without fail for the last several years, in addition to their full-time jobs or whatever they do on the side. If one of them approaches us and says, hey, I just need a particular Sunday off, can I swap for the Monday that Officer Philbrook is working or something like that, I am not going to say no to the poor guy, uh, especially after the fact that he's worked all these years, filled in for us, filled in for our gaps and whatnot. The full-time guys know what their schedule is, and they can predict that what their schedule is several month, months out in advance, uh, in advance, because they know every eight weeks we swap the shifts, uh, shift rotations, and so they can predict when they're going to work. So they should plan their extracurricular activities according to the schedule at that time. And I do understand sometimes things pop up, and certainly we have made allowances for Officer of LaJoy in the past. We've altered the schedule for him so he could go on a hunting trip. We've altered the schedule for him so we could take care of our sister's dad when his dad had a heart issue. We changed the schedule for him when his mom had her knee issue. We altered the schedule for him when his dad had his trial. Most recently, he requested some time off so we could attend a moose lottery, and there have been other issues. So to sit here and say, uh, as he indicated in his uh, grievance, that we never, ever uh, allow him to, to, to change his schedule or whatever, that's absolutely false. All right, uh, can we next go to the uh, issues with the physical agility test? Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, was, was I correct in my question that Officer LaJoy had initially failed the physical agility test and therefore was not hired? Correct. And then was brought back and allowed to take it again and then hired? Correct. All right. So explain the nature of the one and done rule as it's been termed in the agreements. Generally the, the one and, and done rule means basically once you're hired, uh, or actually even prior to that, um, we don't generally, if once you fail the physical jelly test, whether you're applying for a job with us or we've already hired you, gen the general rule is it's adios, see you later especially if we haven't hired you yet. We don't want you to fail one part of the process as you're going through the hiring process, you're done and eliminated. In this case, you know, I gave Officer LaJoy a second chance and he passed the test without uh, any issues and we hired him. To this day, I have never enforced the one and only policy for any single full-time officer that's already been employed here or a part-time officer that's had to go up and take their three-year uh, testing. I do tell them that the policy is still in effect as, in, as a way to encourage them to make sure they pass the test the first time around. 
so we don't have to deal with the, the issues of having to request uh, continuances and whatnot for the police academy. And I think that policy's worked. As far as the policy uh, or the, the issue with uh, Officer Dronsfield administering the, the test in 2015, uh, we did not know that her, the department did not know that her certification expired. Um, and apparently when we missed the test, initially the police academy did not know that her, her uh, certification had expired to administer the, the, the physical agility test as well. Um, I believe it was Officer Dronsfield and her husband that had some discussion and said, yeah, I think that uh, my certification may have expired. Um, I do recall having a discussion with Officer Joy, with Joy about this. And um, uh, I did say that I would call the academy, and then he also asked if, we, if I would mind if he contacted the academy as well. And I said, no, more than area. Um, and I did make an initial phone call to the police academy. He indicates that he contacted the academy. Uh, the, the first email was on, uh, I believe it was May 3rd. It was, it was Sunday, May 3rd, and he testified today that he was actually in the Dominican, Dominican Republic on that day. Well, in fact, on that Sunday, the 3rd, Officer Joy was working for us during the time that he said he, that he was in the Dominican Republic. On that particular Sunday, he was working the 6 a.m. to, it looks like, the 4 o'clock clock shift. The email was sent uh, by Officer Joy to the police academy at uh, just after 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So he was on town time when he sent the, sent the email. Within two days, we were notified by the academy that they were going to take the test because it wasn't his fault. He didn't, and he didn't flunk the test. So I didn't see it at the time as, as a very big issue. And at no time did I ever tell Officer LaJoy that he had to take the physical test the second time, um, only on, uh, ex except with the exception if the academy did not accept the first one. Um, I would never uh, do any type of disciplinary action for him once he passed the first test, and if the academy wouldn't accept it, the, you know, we never had a discussion about disciplinary action. Uh, the only other conversation that we had, as I said, was if the academy required him to take it a second time, that we would obviously allow him to do that. And I, at that time, I had no, uh, no indication, and I was very confident he would pass the physical test, the physical jury test, because he did it very well the first time. He wasn't required to take it a second time. He was not required to take it a second time. Okay. As far as Officer Bailey is concerned, as the uh, lieutenant had indicated, Officer Bailey got uh, injured at the academy. And we did give him uh, ample time to work with Officer Dronsfield, who at the time did get recertified, when he got back here. Officer Bailey went into rehab. He was working out uh, at some place in, uh, in Dover as well. And um, so as part of this process to help him pass the test when he went back to the academy, was that he would work with Officer Dronsfield on a regular basis to try to pass that test. And it, as uh, Officer Joy indicated, Officer Bailey did not pass the test several times. It was three or four times anyway. And there was, uh, we were notified by Officer Bailey that he felt confident enough to be able to go to the academy and pass the test. We sent him up there uh, for the state test, and he did not pass the test. And Officer Bailey is no longer working for us. Uh, I skipped over the beginning. We talked about the towing policy, but could you address that as well? Right. Um, I was aware at the... Uh, I think it was 2012 or 2013, something like that, that, that there were some issues with the towing policy with Officer LaJoy, and they were addressed by the lieutenant at that, at, at that time. And, um, and as a result of, of the uh, uh, interaction that he had with the lieutenant, we found that the towing policy at the time might have been a little bit vague. So we actually altered the policy a little bit, so a little bit more concise, a little bit more clear for everybody to understand. And uh, to my knowledge, uh, there haven't been any issues uh, uh, since then. However, in reading the grievance, uh, you know, he indicates that Officer Hancock has violated the policy on uh, uh, at least a couple of occasions anyway. Uh, this was something that I was not aware of, and at the time uh, uh, we got this, uh, I'm not sure if the lieutenant was aware of it or not, uh, or at least we didn't have discussion, I should say. Uh, having said that, you know, we do have a policy that indicates that if an employee sees another employee violating policy, that um, they should at least notify the, the, the person that they're violating the policy, and maybe work with them to try to correct it, and or notify a supervisor, let, let us know that there, there is obviously an issue someplace. Um, you know, 
I'm not there 24-7, the lieutenant's not there 24-7, so the other officers are also our, our eyes and ears. You know, we're not looking here to really jack anybody up and get anybody in trouble. You know, we're trying to get everybody on the same page, so we're all working cohesively, working together, and that's the ultimate goal for all of us. Right. Um, now, jumping back to uh, the next portion of the grievance uh, addressed the apparent violation of a policy that permitted Officer Hancock to go through the firearms training despite having less than three years tenure. Okay. Our policy does say that the firearms instructor for the department has to be uh, employed with the department for three years, good behavior. Um, at no time do I ever recall telling Officer LaJoy prior to the three year mark that he couldn't apply for the job. I know it's in the policy and he, there's a possibility he may have assumed that I would say no, but I do not ever recall having a conversation with them. And in fact, when someone's asked me to attend any training, I've never denied anyone to attend any training. I actually encourage our guys to take as much training, whether it's in the department, at the police academy, or with some other police agency, as, as often as they like, and as often as we can afford it, obviously. Having said that, uh, after the three-year mark, Officer LaJoy was, uh, uh, was allowed to be a firearms instructor, which, which he wanted to do. And um, he was given the first opportunity to join the, the county SWAT team. He said that he wanted to do it, and I submitted a letter uh, on his behalf. It was accepted by the, uh, the chief's committee, and arrangements were made for him to participate in the selection process. Well, a week prior to the selection process date, Officer LaJoy informed me via letter that he no longer wanted to participate in the SWAT team. Officer Hancock is eligible to be on the SWAT team this August. So my intention is to have, have him join the SWAT team, and part of that training would be to get him certified as a firearms instructor, a shotgun instructor, and a rifle instructor. So when it comes time in August that he's going through the selection process, he has all this other training to back up uh, his ability and to, to add to his credentials to get onto the SWAT team. So that is why Officer Hancock has been allowed to take this training prior to the three-year mark. My intention is to get someone on that SWAT team as soon as possible. I've been wanting to get someone on the SWAT team for the last couple of years. Uh, unfortunately for Officer Philbrick, uh, who's also one of the men in the SWAT team, we wanted to send him as well, but the, 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 uh, the committee won't allow a part-time police officer to be on the SWAT team. So uh, that is the, the, the basis for allowing Officer Hancock to attend the fire instructor training um, prior to the three-year mark. Uh, next we go to uh, the apportionment of overtime. Uh, we discussed, and I think ultimately Officer LaJoy conceded that there is no departmental policy that requires the apportionment of overtime based on rank or seniority, correct? That is correct. That's limited to private details only. That is correct. Uh, would you address uh, Officer LaJoy's complaints regarding his overtime? <clears throat> yes, and specifically to Officer Hancock, um, I officer, generally when, when overtime comes, becomes available, I, I try to give it to the person I know who might be available. And just based upon the, 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 the track record of uh, February and uh, March alone, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, looks like 10, 10 requests for Officer LaJoy to, to work a detail. Um, it wasn't available or, or we see no response. Just based upon that knowledge, uh, I needed to have some uh, items brought up to the Concord state lab and we needed some evidence brought back for trial for the next day. Uh, I knew that Officer uh, Hancock was coming into work before 12 shift, so I, says, I asked him to come in early and um, go to Concord and take care of that, knowing that 99% of the time when I ask, ask him if he's available to either work an overtime shift or a detail shift, specifically detail shift, uh, he's available. So that, that's why it was offered to Officer Hancock at the time because I, I knew I had a relatively good chance that he would say yes, he'd be, he'd be available. And I wouldn't be calling around trying to, trying to locate somebody else. Uh, there was a, another time that, uh, um, that uh, Officer Hancock was called in early. Again, that was to one, I knew he was coming in early to cover the vacation shift uh, for the lieutenant. And um, I said, come in a couple hours early, send you up the concrete. There's something that we need to bring up there and something we need to come back right away. And he offered to do that. 
So, so that, that's why office, office, at that particular time it was offered to uh, Officer Hancock. And I know in his, in his grievance he states it was in, uh, in retaliation for the, for the grievance. Well, that, that's in fact not true. Now, now I, I don't operate that way. As, as I indicated to the folks, just out of the two months, the, the ten times that he wasn't available, that's why it was offered to Officer Hancock. <clears throat> Would you address the uh, issues surrounding the missed training and leave? Okay. The folks from Primex were offering some active shooter training uh, hosted by the Lee Police Department, and slots were limited. And we were one of the very few police departments in the county that was asked by the Lee Police Department to participate in the training with them. Um, I think we had six, uh, six folks from our department that were scheduled to go over there. Everyone was sent an email specifically to them to indicate what date and time they had to be there. And that was back in uh, November. And then back in uh, and then January, I'm sorry, December, at the end of December, a week prior to the training, I sent a general email to everybody indicating to patrol, if you are uh, scheduled to attend the prime munitions training, the uniform of the day is such and such and such and such. So everyone had two notices to be there for that particular day, and everyone showed with the exception of uh, Officer LaJoy, and um, actually Officer Stevens didn't show up because he, he called in sick that day. Uh, you heard the, uh, the exchange regarding text messages. You also, on the day of the training, sent Officer LaJoy a text message advising him that he was to be in Lee at 2 o'clock. I did. Around 12.56 in the afternoon, I sent, I sent him an email. Uh, we had a detail open up for the following day. I asked him if he wanted to work at detail. He indicated to me uh, within two minutes that uh, he had to be in uh, Lee for training the next day. And I said, no, you're today. You need to be in Lee today at 2 o'clock. Afterwards, uh, did Oscar Joy uh, explain himself or apologize? What was the exchange thereafter? Well, initially he said that uh, he had spoken with Officer Hancock and he was under the impression that uh, he and Officer Hancock or, and maybe others were going to go into the training on the following day. Um, when he came back to the PD, because he was scheduled to work the 4 to 12 shift out, it was either the 4 to 12 or maybe the 4 to 12, I'm not sure, but he was, he was scheduled to come in at 4 o'clock that day. And I actually waited in the PD until 4.30 to see if Officer LeJoy would come to me and say, hey, Chief, I screwed up. I don't know what the heck happened with my schedule or whatever. I'm really sorry. Is there something we can do about it? Um, I waited for half an hour, and he, he did not say boo to me that day. So I took it as under the depression that uh, he wasn't going to say anything about it, and he didn't take over any responsibility for missing that training that day. It was suggested in question of uh, Lieutenant Uraskovich that this was um, only the second time that uh, Officer Joy had erred in this way. Uh, was, was this, uh, and as a result, this discipline was somehow unwarranted? Do you have well, a response to that? This is actually the third training that he's missed. He missed a uh, eight-hour shift during his FTO period, and that was addressed by the former Sergeant Kirkinson. And then there was, we had scheduled training, and again, I don't have the, the dates or, but uh, um, we had department training here locally, and uh, Officer LeJoy did apparently look at, look at our schedule and schedule himself to work a shift at the hospital. So at that time, I did allow him to make arrangements to do, 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 to do the training afterwards at, at a later date and time. And then there was an issue with uh, the University of New Hampshire? Yes, and that was in August. Uh, we had uh, several officers go over there to work in detail. And of all the officers, the only officer that didn't show up was Officer LeJoy. Uh, again, was there a reason given for that? Or? Really, no. Just didn't show up. What uh, could you um, briefly detail your thought process in imposing the discipline that you did? Well, as, as we've indicated here tonight, that there have been several several uh, disciplinary actions uh, with Officer LeJoy um, since he's been employed here. Having just spoken to him about missing a very important scheduled event in August, and then he missed this one not six months later, um, I felt that was important that uh, a, uh, an oral reprimand, or I should, uh, yeah, an oral reprimand wasn't a bit, uh, um, going to work, just based upon the history. So that's why I gave him the one day off, the eight hours uh, uh, suspension one day. But Officer LaJoy doesn't tell you that in our, in our discussions on that particular day, 
that I gave him a, ho a holiday off. He took a suspension day on a day he was supposed to work, but I gave him the holiday off, so he still got the eight hours of pay um, for the holiday. And the reason I did that is because I didn't want him to miss a day of work and have a pay period where he only received 32 hours of pay. So that's why I gave him the, the suspension day off on the holiday, when I'm sure one of the other guys would have loved to have the holiday off um, themselves. So, you know, once, once again, you know, we kind of bend over backwards to, to not only reprimand him, but at the same time try to, to minimize the impact on Officer LaJoy's life. So is holiday pay like double time? Is that well, you right? get time and a half. Time. So when you have a holiday, you get 48 hours of pay, well, actually 48, 50 up to hours or something like that. Um, uh, he, received, he still received the 40 hours. Um, I think I am. I don't, uh... Well, Officer Luck, if I might mention that, uh, Officer Julian mentioned something about his, his personnel file. I have a question about that. Okay. <coughs> during, during discussion, he had indicated to me that he was look, applying, I think it was Farmington, Sun was open, whatever. And we had a discussion about some items that may have been in his personnel file at the time. And I indicated that yes, we would take the items out. I would take, and, and it embarrassed me to say this, but um, if someone came down to look at his personnel file, I would take those items out so it wouldn't affect him negatively in the future. However, the agreement was that they were only taken out from the time that the people were coming down to take a look at the files, not to be taken out permanently. In, in that vein, um you also uh, reversed the uh, write-up of Sergeant or of uh, Officer Lavoy by Lieutenant Yuraskovich, did you not? Well, I didn't reverse it. He, he recommended uh, uh, some discipline that, uh, that, I, that I just didn't recommend. Um, he wanted the written write-up, and when I just, I, I made an oral, uh, an oral reprimand. Um, the Lieutenant and I have uh, uh, varying degrees on how discipline should be enacted here. Uh, I tend to try to, to be the peacekeeper, the negotiator, give everybody second chances as often as I can. And I don't tend to uh, uh, deal out the discipline maybe as harsh as I, as I should, or, or, or as the lieutenant thinks I should. Um, but, that, but that's the reason, right, uh, I, you know, I didn't reverse it, I just didn't go with his recommendation. Uh, so his personnel file was uh, a sanction that was recommended was rejected by you. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. Anything else? Right. Mike, do you have a question? Yes, please. Good evening. So your decision to eliminate ship swaps was directly related to Officer LaJoy's from your perspective, abuse of that. Correct. And it's true you never told him that that was the reason why you changed that? I didn't tell anybody in the department that was the reason. Okay. But that was the reason. That was the reason. Um, now, you mentioned something about part-time officers also having other full-time jobs or other part-time jobs as well. Correct. So your full-time officers, some of them have that as well too, correct? Yes. So that's something that may be taken into consideration with scheduling issues, right? No. At all? No. Full-time officers, this is their number one job. They're responsible to Rawlinson first and their part-time job second. Right. My part-time guys are responsible to their outside employment first and then Rawlinson Police Department second. Absolutely. And there's policies on how many hours they can work and all of that. 24, I believe, is the, uh, the limit on right. that a full-time full -time officer officers can work, can work no more than 24 hours. Yes. That's what I meant to say, yes. yes. And, um, I'm you, sorry, no more than 24 hours in another job? Another correct. job, correct. Right. Um, now, you mentioned that department training, and I don't mean to be skipping around, but it has to do with the uh, full-time officer's schedule. Sure. Um, the department training that Officer LaJoy had made arrangements uh, or was scheduled to work at a second job, and you and him made arrangements to reschedule that department training. At the very last minute. Right, but correct. it was before the training, correct? Before the training, yes. Okay, so he actually, when rescheduled, showed up for that training. Yes. Okay, it wasn't a situation where he just did not show up. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. 
and that eight hour shift um, that he didn't show up to during uh, training with the prior sergeant, um, that was something that was dealt with by the sergeant? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Kind of on a similar philosophy that the lieutenant shares regarding newer officers and dealing with it maybe a little more gently than you do someone who's been on the force for a while? Uh, yes. You would agree with me, I hope, that even though full-time officers can predict their schedule and arrange their life accordingly, things happen. Correct. And when those things happen, do you try your best as a department to make accommodations for officers? As long as they're a legitimate request for change, yes. And that, you know, I, I've indicated five or six of them that, that we, we, we've helped officer LaJoy with. Uh, but if someone comes in at the last minute, you know, I got a cookout, you know, the family got a cookout plan or something like that. Well, well sorry, you know, you know what your shift is, you know, so. Understood. Yes. I want to be clear on this one and done rule. Um, it's not a formal written policy, correct? Correct. All right. It's more of a, a rule that you have and that you communicate to people. Correct. I, I heard you refer to it as a policy. I believe we've referred to it as a policy. You treat it as if it's a policy in terms of how you share it with uh, officers in your department? Uh, yes. yes. I believe your intent was to, to motivate them. Right, to motivate them, yes. Yeah. And you did say that um, Officer Bailey uh, did fail three to four times. Is correct. that your recollection? Yeah. Now, one thing I was a little unclear of, so please correct me. Um, did you tell Officer LaJoy that you would contact the Academy? Yes. All right. Did you, in fact, contact yes, the Academy? Yes, I did. Okay. And what did they tell you about uh, what would happen as a result? That they would get back to me. Okay. Did they ever respond to you? Again, at the time, this was such a... I know, I know it's a serious issue with Officer LaJoy at the time, but it was resolved in the matter of less than a week, and, and, and you know, I, I don't have any specific notes as to their returning my call. And I actually called the police academy to see what they had on file in reference to this, and asked them to send me whatever they had. And they had no, uh, the only information that they had was uh, the paperwork that we sent up for the physical agility test, the medical, and then Officer LaJoy's uh, email for the third and the fifth, and then a response back to him on the fifth. Um, they didn't have any paperwork indicating that, uh, that he had, they weren't going to accept the initial one because Officer Johnsfield was un not certified. I don't have any formal paper from the Academy indicating that. So, again, as I said earlier, I think it was just something that uh, we just realized, somehow we realized at the last minute that Officer Johnsfield may not have been certified, and we all made attempts, or at least myself and Officer Joy made attempts, to try to correct it as soon as possible. Safe to say his reaction kind of is what you want with that policy? To be concerned that if I don't pass it, then I'm. Oh, definitely. Uh, and actually, this is, you know, uh, you know, he asked me if he could contact the academy. And of course, you know, of course he can contact the academy. And this is actually the second time that he and I have had to address an issue with the academy over his physical agility test. You know, they sent him a, uh, a letter back, I think, 2012, indicating yeah. that the following year that he had to take the test when, in fact, he didn't. And in between, you know, his, his content academy and, and my sub content academy, they said, you're right, we made a mistake up here. This is the correct date for him to take the physical agility test on a prior incident. Um, in terms of the towing policy, um, you mentioned that you have a policy that says if an officer sees someone violating the policy, they should notify? Correct. Does it say must or should? Do you know? No, I gotta hear something. No employee will allow another employee to violate the standards of conduct of the department or any other rule, procedure, or policy with impunity. Employees must notify their supervisor of any violation of local, state, federal law committed by any employee. If such violation were committed by a non-employee, would be handled by the department. If the incident does not involve a violation of law, it is, it is the obligation of every employee who has knowledge of the incident to take steps to ensure that the violation is not repeated. This obligation may include notifying the employee's supervisor for advice, assistance, or disposition of the incident. So if he's, if an officer is under an impression that a supervisor is aware, you would agree under that policy they don't have to notify. 
Well, if they're aware of a particular incident, yes. It, but if if an op you know, Officer LaJoy is alleging there was at least more than one instance. Um, I think I need to rephrase my question. Okay. If a particular officer is aware that a supervisor has been notified, you would agree that officer does not also have an obligation to go to that supervisor. Correct. Um, you articulated several reasons uh, that you felt it necessary to allow Officer Hancock to undergo the firearms instructor training. Um, but you would agree that there is a policy that you have that you have to run for three years. You have to be the department's firearms instructor for three You have to be here for three years to be the department's firearms instructor. It doesn't say that we can't send you to the training to do something else with that training. Okay. So once you go through that training, are you deemed a firearms instructor? By the, the police academy, you have the certification to be a firearms instructor. Okay. No one is a firearms instructor for the department until they receive official word from me via written communication. Okay. And the purpose of going to that training would be to become a firearms instructor? Correct. Yeah. And if the SWAT option was not there, would you have sent Officer Hancock to go through this training in advance no. prior to being eligible? No. You were talking about retaliation for the grievance, and I, I just want to make sure I, I get your words right. Um, at one point, I thought you said, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that you pick people who you think will be available for those overtime spots. Correct. Okay. Um, and then you said that you offered it to Officer Hancock because you knew he would be available, because he's normally available. Correct. All right. Um, but then I thought I heard you say that you did not even consider Officer LaJoy because he's refused in the past. Is that correct? No, I said based upon the, the, the recent correspondence that I had with him over, the, over like, like seven weeks, that um, there, there were 10 no's or no returns uh, from my request. So based upon that, coupled with the fact that I knew that Officer Hancock, 99% of the time is always available, that's why I offered to Officer Hancock. And, and I, if I said it falsely, but that's kind of common for full-time officers not necessarily to want that, right? You talked about that when you were talking about shift swaps and knowing their schedule, that full-time officers aren't as eager generally to take those. Am I correct or wrong? Uh, well, it depends on the officer. I mean, some officers do, some officers don't. Yeah, some, some officers, you know, I've got a sergeant that doesn't work any overtime whatsoever, or details. He doesn't want that. However, if your officer to off, offer it to... Um, uh, overtime or, or details to Officer Hancock or Officer um, LaJoy, I mean, they, they, they take a lot of them. Um, in terms of the Primex training, one of the things you mentioned were the two emails. Um, the original one states the specific day and the specific time. Correct. Um, the second one, I just want to note so we're on the same page. Would you agree with me that that one does not state the specific date of that training? And I'm going to show it to you just for your correction. Yeah, I really know what it says. It's, 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 it's written to everybody. It says if you're, if you're scheduled to attend the training, this is what the uniform of the day is. Right, and it says if you're the training in Lee next week. Correct. Correct? Correct. So that one does not state the specific date. Correct. Because that's a general one. Because we had six offices going at six different times. So rather than write an email to everyone specifically, because all, all I was talking about was one particular item, and that was the uniform of the day. I sent it a mass email out to everybody. I, I don't disagree with that reason why you sent it. Uh, but so you had different officers going at different times. Correct. Okay. So one officer could have talked to another and been told a different day and time that that officer was going, and that would have been accurate. That officer was going that day. Correct. And then I believe you testified about this, but the text, when, he, when you offered the detailed officer LaJoy, his response was, I'm actually in training and leave that day. Correct. So based on the text, it appears he thought it was the next day. Correct. And I told him that. No, That's correct. That's incorrect. It's, it's right. today, too. <laughs> and have you seen the text um, that was presented uh, that was between Officer LaJoy and Lieutenant? Uh, I have not seen that now. May I show this to you? Sure. You can just take a look at the top half of that.
Sure, it looks like the lieutenant's asking if he's on the way. Right. Officer LaJoy said, on my way with a question mark. And of course, you know, you have no idea what, okay, so, so it's at uh, That's right 201. The start. 201. Right. Yep. Wondering why aren't you here? And exactly, the lieutenant's yeah. response is? Uh, don't at this point because it's been canceled. They, they were offered for at a specific time for specific individuals. <coughs> Are you aware that Officer LaJoy asked the lieutenant if he could go the next day? I believe they had an opening on, I think it was on a Thursday, if I remember correctly. Um, that was because one of your officers had gotten sick? Uh, correct, and I said no. What was my decision? Now, council spent a lot of time kind of going through Officer LaJoy's history um, with the town. We mentioned some of them previously, the eight-hour shift during training that was missed that was handled orally. Um, there was that department training. I think you and I can agree he didn't miss that. It was just a scheduling issue, and you accommodated him. Would you agree with that? Correct. All right. And then we have the UNH detail. And on that one, the lieutenant actually requested a written reprimand, correct? Correct. So at that point, the only prior missed was during his FTO training all the way in the beginning, right? Which was handled by the sergeant? Yes. All right. So at this point, several years later, I believe approximately four and a half or five years later, is the, the next event. It sounds about right. Okay. And at that point, the lieutenant's actually requesting a written reprimand. Not an oral, but a written reprimand. Correct. And you thought that was too harsh and went the route of an oral reprimand. Correct. Okay. And then several months later, you have this issue in Lee. Um, from your perspective, he didn't show up. It was canceled as a result. Correct. And at that point, uh, the lieutenant recommended a one-day suspension. Correct. So it was not a request at that point for a written reprimand, correct? Correct. And in fact, he did not get a written reprimand. He got a suspension. Correct. Um, in terms of being a holiday, um, I understand your rationale for that in saying he would still get some money for that day. But you would agree with me that in the end, he's still missing out on the same amount of hours of pay. Oh, of course. Correct. Of course. He's, he's entitled to get that holiday pay. He just happens to be officer who's scheduled to work on that holiday. Correct. So the holiday pay comes no matter what. And then by working, you, you get the pay for working as well. Correct. So either way, he would have lost that eight hours Correct. as a result of the suspension. I have one follow-up uh, question, Chief. Uh, it's suggested that, well, let me start again. The issues that Council just went through regarding Officer Joy's disciplinary record, that is not the sum total of disciplinary issues that you've had with Officer Joy during his employment by the town, is it? No, it's not. Correct. Did, doc, did Officer LaJoy's um, full history play of, of disciplinary um, of disciplinary actions play a role in your imposition of the suspension? Yes, I just looked at the totality of the circumstances from, from point A to point B. That's all I have. May I ask a question in response sure. to that? You would agree that he's a, a very um, effective officer in terms of his number of arrests and citations that he does for the department? Uh, he's right up there, yes. And he yeah. gets, uh, it's common for him to get responses from citizens of the town thanking him for his assistance with them. Many officers have received those, yes. Yeah. So, yes, he has received those, and they're in his personnel file as they well. They are, yes. So, his history is not just littered with issues of kind of violations. Oh, no, of course not. No, of course he, not. he also has a series of glowing reviews and, and good statistics as an officer. Yes. Thank you. I have to ask a question. Sure. I will, I got it wrong then why would you ever take any disciplinary actions out of his personnel file for another department that may potentially be hiring him? Why would, why would you ever take that out? Well, 
Um, if the officer really wants to leave the employee of the Rawls Police Department, and if that's a means to assist that officer to leave here, then we would, we would accommodate that. Generally, generally it's not done, and we don't do that. It's just that, uh, you know, since, since day one, um, you know, I've been um, trying to give Officer LaJoy a break, a break, a break, a break, a break, well, since day one. And uh, now we see where it's come to roost. Anything else? Will Officer LaJoy be available again for other questions? Or are we uh, that well, that wasn't part of the procedure. Okay. That's been our defer to his, his attorney. If the board has questions, Officer LaJoy will make us up. I have a couple questions. I, I am. Uh, we're all finished with the chief. Thank you, chief. Thank you. And you want your questions of Officer Joy? Thank you, uh, sorry, this is attorney. I apologize. I had it written down on a piece of paper and I apparently flipped the page, but I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I apologize for not asking at the time. And relative to the, the, the text messages, do you receive alerts on your phone when a text message comes in? And I do. Um, it just if it's not a, it just says text message. Okay. I can show you. Sure, that'd be helpful. Actually. <clears throat> you want to send it? Do you want to send one? So no, you can no, see? I, I believe. So it's 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 actually, a, it's I got some. Yeah, I have one in my pocket. So. So it shows like just mm -hmm. reads text message. Okay. So unless I open it, I can't read it. I'm sorry. So unless I open this, I can't read it. Really? Yeah, so cause, well, I got it. I got it blocked. See who it's from though. Because I can, I can see mine. I can see the beginning of it. Right. So, but I, 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 I'm not. But mm -hmm. the other. So, you receive text messages at home. I know there are. Yes. There are spots where they might not be covered. You know, were you home at the time? Yes. Okay. That's all I have. I just. What well, was it? Clear my mind. So. Anyone else? Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Then I guess we will. Uh, we will close the, uh, the hearing, and as I said at the outset, the board will uh, reserve decision and presumably issue a written order, a written finding, um, within the next 21 days. Thank you all for your time. Thank you very much.